go time ladies and gentlemen and everybody in between welcome once again to the sin shop live stream i am of course the mighty pong and uh you'll be seeing uh this guy over here here in just a little bit but before we go into that we uh have a quick announcement on the shop now this is all on behalf of the sin shop now the sin shop is a maker hacker space located in las vegas nevada that has the tools and equipment that you can use to make pretty much whatever you can think of now we're officially closed for renovation right now but we do have some members who are holding the shop open for limited use if you're in the vegas area and you'd like to help us get back in action or you just want to stop by and check out the shop join our discord to find out all that and much much more now to join our discord go to sinshop.org forward slash discord to find the latest information and to make sure you're notified of future events including virtual ones just like this one you can join us at meetup.com forward slash sinshop and with that i would like to present to you guys the entire the whole damn crew from jackpot stars of the most recent battle bots i i you know and and, and i and you know i say that you guys kind of came in and freaking crushed it like no like you guys were just were just these guys from from vegas it's not like vegas is known for being particularly you know creating amazing bots and you were two and oh yeah it, it was a it was a crazy run this year for sure absolutely all right so so let's go ahead and, and uh, introduce everybody so first of all we've got we've got jeff waters jr uh, dead center and uh, so you were basically the guy who who started all this off right well not just for jeff but i started off with the biggest combat robotics club out here uh, robert uh, what, do, what do you do jeff picked me up from the group he created and uh starting off man it's really hard to know what kind of motors you would use and jeff was great at pointing those out and we got the first robot built and then i just kept building robots after that well we'll get to some of your little ones here in okay. just a little bit because i've i've been i've i've seen you guys I, I thought jackpot was the only one and then i'm seeing you know over the past week i've seen you guys with like three or four different ones i think that's some very very low end of numbers like i think i've had four different designs in the past month <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome all right all right so last but certainly not least we've got shay all right shay what what is what is your role in the group what do you do uh well jeff found uh found me through the battlebots groups too and i yep. think um the the other i think people who are kind of filtering in when you guys were first starting it like didn't have the like they had other things going on in their lives and yeah. i was another a third person who didn't so <laughs> we it could be thoroughly absorbed into the energy of building the arena and putting on events and um doing weekend builds to get small bots going so i did the the branding and got us a logo and helped paint the arena and then kept showing up <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome well so so we've got all kinds of questions from everybody but i want to get like i want to take a second and 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 get your your story because i a lot of the people that i've talked to are like oh my god yeah i want i want to start something like that i want to do this and blah, blah 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 so i guess let's go all the way back when did you guys catch the bug to start doing robot combat period like how did that come about i i'm, I'm probably the one that had the bug for the longest <laughs> yeah by, uh, by more than like a decade <laughs> uh, oh no kidding back uh, i was hoping they were going to use it this year during filming but i don't i don't think they caught wind of it but there's a picture of me in the audience in the 1999 uh pay-per-view for battle bots oh wow <laughs> me and my dad sitting there and you know, we, we we talked about you know building something back then but my dad wasn't super knowledgeable in tech and I was only like seven or you know, I was like six at the time. So mm -hmm. it never really panned out. Then I got the bug a little bit again in about 2012 when I was doing Vex robotics in high school. Mm. And I tried building something then, but it, it, I don't know, but family stuff. So like my father passed away during that time. And so I, so I didn't really have time to get into that again. Then it kind of got the bug again, right about 2017 when I was, I just had to find the motivation to actually go out and do it. And the first robot I built was like in seven days. Wow. <laughs> it was like, I, the motivation for that was, uh, I saw that there was an event in Pomona, California called, I think it was still called October obliteration. And I saw mm -hmm. it was in like 11 days and from 
I, I had to, it's very similar story to the jackpot. Actually, it's just, it just got speed built. And like a week later, I was at California. So Robert, how about you? How, how did you get started off into all this? So, um, you know, I, I watched BattleBots when I was a kid and I did the first robotics in high school. Um, and then after that, I, I kind of left robotics for a while. And when, um, BattleBots came back on discovery mm -hmm. and you could just buy the seasons on Amazon. That's when I started getting back into it. Yeah. And, um, I spent way too much time designing my first robot and I put way too much thought into it. Uh, your first robot should be just something you toss together and just like, all right, it's here. I'm going to have fun at these competitions. Mm -hmm. Um, and then after the first robot, you kind of get a hang of it. And I just started building a bunch of just kind of off the wall robots. And it's been a blast. Wow. Yeah. At the Sin Shop, we used to do this thing called Hebocon, which was uh, which was basically like you had to build the robot within a half hour or something to that effect. And it was just like this sumo match. And, and you, you, the, the concept was basically crappy robot fighting, if I remember right. Uh, I, I've... Uh... Not to cut Shea off or anyone else off, but I've I've done Hebacon. I was at a uh, I was at a combat event in Colorado. It was at a Steam Fest, so you know the whole science, missions, mathematics, and all that. So mm -hmm. they did a combat event there. But the second day, it was kind of this everyone just hanging out, and they had Hebo going on where they had you know piles of you know donated toys and stuff. You had to hot glue mm -hmm. it all together. I wish I had a picture of it if we were going to talk about Hebo, but it's the same thing. You just have those two ramps. You let them both go, and then they run into each other. Then it would be a, like a target in the middle, and whoever was closest to the middle advanced to the next round. I don't oh, know if okay. you know, it's similar, but that's how we were doing it there. I think I think what I what I saw was uh, they had a little platform. You had to push the other person or the other bot off, and if your bot was too good, they spun a wheel for like penalties or something like that. If I remember correctly. So so uh, Shay, how did you get get started off into all this? Like how did you you know you're like hey robots? Yeah, I I think that's that kind of sums it up. <laughs> yeah, I, right. I grew up like watching Fast Cheap and Out of Control and getting really into that and really liking the idea of robots, but not being yeah. particularly hands on. It was a documentary with like I I guess I wrote a fan letter to Rodney Brooks and I was like eight or something. Was, was <laughs> but, Fast Cheap and Out of Control? Was, it was that the it show the naked where they? Mole rats. And oh the, no, that's different. And the topiary stuff, and then they also had a thing about like kismet and uh, the stuff Rodney Brooks is doing at MIT, and it was just like that. I guess I watched way too many times for you know my parents' uh, concerns, I guess. <laughs> but I never really that. got into it, into it because um, I was always more on the artsy side and didn't uh, understand how accessible it really was. My dad was always like tinkering with wiring things like wired, uh, uh, uh LED fireflies to like go off randomly in my sister's bedroom and stuff like oh, that. Cool. So like it was around, but I never really got into it until, um, once I had moved out here, I started watching battle bots again. And I just was like, this is super fun. I have a lot of energy about things when I yeah. get really excited about them. So I was on Facebook a lot about, um, you know, finding out different or, you know, seeing different things and threads. And then Jeff found me through that. And then once I showed up there, uh, Robert taught me how to solder and mm -hmm. helped me design the first bot that I fought with. And then I got ideas from that. And now I make really murderous bristle bots. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> awesome. It's, it's amazing to me, like, cause, cause in all, with all three of you guys and myself included and, and, uh, and, oh, we'll, we'll uh, get to the question from the chat here in just a second. Uh, but for everybody, you know, including myself, it seems like everybody was influenced by battle bots and I'm going a little out of order here, but I saw on the last show that there was a tribute, uh, to Grant Imahara at the very end of the episode. And yeah. one of the people, uh, actually one of our guest hosts normally, Zenify, uh, he had asked if uh, if Grant Imahara had inspired you guys in any way. I have a sideways answer to that that isn't very like meaningful in a way, but like okay. I had watched, I grew up watching uh, Junkyard Wars and stuff like that more often. And I remember when Mythbusters came yes. on, my dad was like, oh, these are the guys from BattleBots. And I was like, 
cool, but I never actually watched BattleBots. I just like right. got excited about Mythbusters because it had the guy from BattleBots on it. And I know uh, that was like, then once Grant and them had joined there, I forget if they weren't originally as prominent, but that was why I started watching Mythbusters. And then I was like, oh, they're in BattleBots. It's really cool. But I, I never actually saw <laughs> BattleBots until I was probably until I was here in Vegas. Oh, wow. Just yeah. kind of crazy to think about, or at least watched it with any sort of continuity. But, yeah. So yes, I, I cared a lot about <laughs> things like that. That is a connection, but it's not a very meaningful one. Oh, no, that works. It's funny. Junkyard Wars is the show that I thought you were talking about when you mentioned Fast, Cheap, and Out of Control. And I will always remember I Junkyard love- Wars as the show that I finally realized, wait a minute, electric is way more powerful than gas. They can't even keep that mail truck on the road. <laughs> you remember that episode? Like they had a mail truck that they convert- I don't remember the specifics, but I believe it. They, they convert uh, a mail I truck to run show, on batteries. Though. Yeah? That, Who was that would, well, that's, and that's the future now. So <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. No time. kidding. Yeah. <laughs> so, so how about you guys? Did Grant and Mahara, do you, you know, uh, uh, influence you guys in any way or was it just like, Ace the guy from Mythbusters? I'm, uh, it's such because I got in, like, I was around the sport around the time, but yeah. he never really, I never got to meet him physically, like meet him. Yeah. But he was definitely one of the builders that kind of, he was the one that he was the breakout star. He, you know, I mean, he's kind of like he was the face for a bit. Like yeah. we had a, um, oh, was it? I think I'm trying to remember an old TLC special, but it was an old TLC special that took place at Robo Games 2016, maybe 2015. It was right before the reboot to BattleBots happened. I want to, I think I know what you're talking about. It was like, it, they weren't fighting. It was like, you know, you got to put this ball in this hoop or something no, like that. No, right? it was straight, it was straight up fighting. It had a, oh, it was. Um, last rites and it had a, um, sewer snake and it had a alcoholic stepfather. It had, you know, all the older robots in there. So oh, okay. I think it was 2013 is when yeah. that special came out. Cause I remember right. the reboot started like 2015 and, I'm not sure. I might. I might go ahead and ask. And I'm curious if that was what re- revigorated the whole reboot. Hmm. But that's kind of like what I remember getting back into box was that, and I wanted to get into Robo Games and all that. But eh, I, I, I so, was too late for that. Interesting. Yeah. So, like I was telling you guys we, before we started the show, we were we were talking for for a little bit, and uh, I mentioned how there's a lot of people in uh, at the shop that are just they're just like, oh yeah, I want to I want to get into that too, and yeah, I want to do the thing. So, uh, what was the biggest blocker for you guys? You're like, I want to get into this. Uh, what do I do now? <laughs> what was what was the biggest blocker? So for me, it yeah. was not knowing all the RC stuff, uh, how powerful the motors were and a lot of, and how receivers worked. Um, and once I learned that, that's, that's when designing to like designing a robot took off for me and Mm -hmm. I I was able to design something up really quick. So for me, it was learning what parts I should be using. Gotcha. Jeff. I think but the hard, I'd say the hardest part to just be for more anyone that's looking to get into the sport is the hardest part of building your first box. Once you get you, what you need to do is, you know, kind of do something simple. Like you you don't wanna you're not gonna be out there building like some weird or double articulating twin disc, whatever, like nonsense. It's your first robot's gonna be something simple and the whole it's once you build your first one you get past that major hurdle it's a lot of it leading up to it is making sure you have the right controllers the right tech that's inside it like what robert said but there's a lot of people that had back just like myself that did drone racing and rc racing for years so mm-hmm. a lot of that is crossover but at the sure. end of the day i know people are going to hate, hate me for saying this they're just glorified rc cars <laughs> no, it totally makes sense. Mad they're, they're, version. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, there are RC cars for for a demolition derby, derby basically. 
Yeah, so I think about, another barrier for yeah. entry. I think another barrier for entry might be also like having the stuff because there is a lot of stuff, especially when you want to be testing things safely. If you want to build something that has a weapon, you have to be able to test it in an enclosed test box. And so yeah. our first thing, sort of concurrent with building the small bots was building an arena that we could safely test one and three pound bots in. And I yeah. think Jeff had originally started with uh, an arena from the Mad Catter makerspace, like Mad Catter operates out of a makerspace in Southern California. Mm -hmm. So you guys had that for your initial builds, but building the arena was just as much an endeavor as getting the bots built to fight in it. So, but you can make a smaller test box. For, mm -hmm. for stuff like that but also the the amount of manufacturing too that's available now is something i don't think anybody could have anticipated before like there's companies now like Sun where you can just like order your own custom design that you've done it than solidworks or fusion 360 whatever and you can mm -hmm. just have a metal plate cut that's exactly what you want you don't have to worry about like bandsaw and holes and stuff like that and you can just like make really complex high quality things way more accessibly now and i think that's yeah. something people don't realize you don't have to like be hand milling out everything or get everything in cardboard i mean cardboard helps but yeah, yeah. that's what's great about it now is a um a lot of them if you like one of the other barriers i guess to reiterate is like some type of you don't need to have it because there's so many off the shelf kits and stuff now mm -hmm. but just some like basic um design knowledge of in cad because right, if you do it right, you can pair, you can learn how to design things correctly, where you can just order these flat pack parts from like Sencut Sen or mm -hmm. any other of these companies, and you can just take like a three D printed core and build your parts onto that. Then there's not really any super manufacturing there. It's more just bolting together a kit at that point. Got it. Got it. Okay. Let's so the arena has a funny story behind it is we pick, we did pick it up uh, an arena up from Southern California and then we got it here and Jeff goes, I don't, I don't like the, the plexiglass around it. So he, I, yeah, I didn't think it was safe enough to get so it was kind of filthy and the whole top of it was, you know, wire. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's, it's, oh wow. It's octagonal, so it's a totally different. Yeah. Well, oh, this and it was only was, in, so, it was only eighth inch, right? Well, yeah. not so, only that, but the arena was. It's an old arena. Like the power level, of these bots have probably septupled in probably the past six years. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So well, you guys were doing fairies well, initially too. So. Well, yeah, so, and I wanted to ask you guys about that too because you've got a robot that weighs as much as a person. And it packs enough potential energy once it spills up to one shot somebody. Like if you actually accidentally got in the way of that blade, that's your whatever's there ain't going to be there anymore. No. So like, yeah. So where in the world do you do you practice? Do you go to like an abandoned parking lot and beat up a washing machine? Like how do you how do you how do you practice that? So there's not really practicing, uh, right? what we we do is we'll take it out to like a road that goes out in the middle of the desert and then uh, okay. we'll drive it around spin it up and hit something and that's about mm -hmm. all the practice you get before you go to an event you really don't get to like practice full spin up and like driving crazy because you have yeah. gyro issues and you would flip the bot and land weapon first on the ground and then then all bets are off. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. So uh, there's not really any practicing other than small bots. Yeah. Oh, uh, also uh, in the chat, dog lover 64, who is six, by the way, uh, wants to know how fast jackpot can go. Uh, six. So what is the yeah. 16 I miles an I hour? It, it changed a lot over the course of that period. between the first fight and the fourth fight we changed our gearing a few times oh okay it, yes originally it was like like 20 something because we didn't have the proper gearing mm. so it went from like 16 on it's probably about 16 miles an hour on that sub-zero fight then mm -hmm. our wheels were so small that we had to go to bigger wheels well, we kept the same sprocket size, I believe, if I recall correctly, for that fight because we didn't have the new sprockets yet. 
Mm. So that next fight against Ghost Raptor, we were extremely overgeared and we had big wheels. So then our speed went up from like 12 to like 18 or 16 or something around that range because you have a different rollout, final rollout. Then he was not ready for you guys. Yeah. Then it drops back down on. We ended up getting another set of sprockets like the night before that fight against Lockjaw. And mm-hmm. that's when it went back down to about 12 miles an hour. Mm. That was that was such an amazing fight. Uh, both of those were like Ghost Raptor, you just popping his head off and, and, and the fight with Lockjaw. I mean, taking on one of the originators of the sport and coming through, you know, winning. It was just just absolutely amazing. Uh, one thing, actually, Art Ninja uh, Attack in the chat uh, says, uh, does the does the gearing relate to the slippiness of the floor? I noticed that there was a lot of people that had trouble getting traction in the last season of, of BattleBots. Was that, was the floor weird, or what was the situation with that? So, the floor panels don't match up perfectly. Um, so, you have, like, you know, a tile floor where you have, ga- like, gaps in between the panels. Mm-hmm. So... And a lot of people, what they're trying to do is they're trying to get wedgelets, uh, which is, you know, the hinged, you know, metal in, uh, in the front of a robot as mm-hmm. close to the floor as possible to get under the other robots. Right. So they catch those gaps and then that like they get stuck on them. Mm-hmm. Um, but the floor surface itself was uh, they put a new grippy paint on it this season and mm jackpot was actually had like we were driving in the street all right but when we put it in the box even with the big wheels it was having a little bit of trouble because of the extra grip that that paint had oh it was extra grip it was it was a grippier it wasn't slippy yeah yeah okay well yeah and i can't really see too much like jackpot didn't really like I was, I was the driver for it, but it kind of this kind of went where it wanted to. Like it was <laughs> jackpot was good mm-hmm. on driving, but uh, with future iterations, it's definitely gonna have. A you more- made it look a lot more drivable than it was. I think so, your yeah. your your RC car experience, because Jeff's got a, like really a lot of experience driving like rc mm-hmm. cars competitively so yeah. what you brought to that is the the, the reason jackpot worked well, like, <laughs> because it wasn't that functional but, with the yeah. time we had and that's not a reflection of anybody doing anything yeah. wrong it's just like we didn't have time to tune it better so jeff had to adapt and did an amazing job yeah i think no, I, hey, absolutely. Going, robert i think i handed it to you at one point you're like what the uh, <laughs> well, I, the weapon was yeah, tricky too. It, like it, it, there was, was a special like, thing for the weapon that you that Robert you had to figure out too. But yeah, yeah I. Oof, so yeah. I, I, you know, I would have to say the only reason Jackpot did so well is Jeff was able to drive around the drivetrain issues <laughs> that we had. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, Jeff's a really, really good driver, you know, with the small bots and obviously in the big bots too. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. We'll get, oh, we'll definitely get to the little bots in a second. Go ahead. Check. Oh, well, what I was going to say kind of ties into the small bot a little bit, but like one of Jeff's That's robots, good. sorry, I'm talking about you, Jeff <laughs> off track was kind of what started you on the design for jackpot that made it kind of possible because we've been talking about like, Oh, wouldn't it be great. Like we have the time, like, Hey, they, they might have openings since teams have had to drop out because of all the restrictions and stuff. And so from my understanding, correct me if I'm wrong, Jeff, but like you had kind of mocked up what a 250 pound version of off track would be. And once you realized how affordable the tracks could be, even though they want to be back ordered, you're like, oh, we could get these tracks. We could do this. Oh, these motors would work for under like 200 bucks. Like, oh, we could just get these parts. This is actually really doable. And then once we're like, all right, let's try it. And then we started finding out like, oh, the tracks are back ordered. We can't get those. Okay, let's switch to wheels. Okay, so then we have to do this and then we have to do that. Yeah. And that's how what it dictated it. But I think our off track was the gateway bot to what Jackpot wound up becoming. Uh, Spin Wizard yeah, says, can concur on the driving part, having fought Jeff before, he's really good at it. Uh, Spin Wizard, what robot? I'm trying to remember. I, I don't know your handle, so I have to remember what fight that was, because we've been, I've been way too many events. 
Oh, <laughs> and the reason I said that was because off track is also very hard to drive and Lumbo is very hard to drive. So your yeah. bots already being like sort of 3D chess to drive, I think helps in this case that you weren't like, yeah, yeah. This yeah. a pain to drive. Well, so I, I guess we may as well go ahead and, and since we're since we're talking about it already, this is something that I didn't even realize existed until Monday, and that's the the smaller uh, uh, you know, robot competitions, the the more regional stuff. Like I, I discovered uh, Norwalk earlier this year, uh, earlier this week, and you know watched almost all eleven hours of it. I got up to hour eight. <laughs> <laughs> it kind of stay it, hydrated, you know. take breaks. <laughs> that's right. Oh, that's Midler. right. You gotta do that. Oh, oh, it's it's Medler, yeah. And yeah, and Medler's hung in there. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. That was a really not not many can hang tough against. Yeah, Stuff Medler. Fun. Well, go ahead. Medler here is a a local builder too. Um, oh, nice. Yeah, he he went to our uh, July Fourth event. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. So I noticed that, that what was really interesting about that event in, in Norwalk is how many people from BattleBots were there. I mean, Bunny was there. I saw there was Ray Billings was there. The team from Ribot was there. Uh, you guys were there. You know, like, that's ridiculous. That, and that's out in what? Massachusetts, isn't it? Uh, I, rather, I think all the, a lot of the New York teams, because SME and Pain Train, and p1 those mm -hmm. builders are all out there too some of the uh some of the folks from big dill there's a few others yeah. but so there's some regulars that are there a lot and then yeah i mean once you put a competition like that out there it's moths to flame we can't we can't stay <laughs> yeah, I can. say there's more prize money at norwalk than there is at battle Plus. really yeah. Now, now you, you, I'm sure you can't talk about about what the prize money is for Battle Bot. Oh yeah, Blood Sports always there too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. Well, well, cool. Uh, let's see. Did I actually? Oh, so yeah, I just see, put a link like, in the I'm, chat. It, oh, go ahead. Yeah, my, I think my only two losses at Norwalk this time around were all people from WPI, and they were all from Team Ribot. Oh, oh is that right? Box. The Slapbox team goes there. That's a family, and that's a that's a dangerous family. Oh, <laughs> oh really? <laughs> yeah, they're really tough. Yeah, I would well, almost we'll see. Fifty percent are from Battlefront at Norwalk this last event. And yeah, I think this next event's going to be even more crazier. So, we should oh, that's be, awesome. Uh, will both be in that one. So. Oh, very cool. Awesome. Yeah, I'll, have to, I'll definitely have to check that out for sure. So you, you mentioned, you know, we were talking about like other teams. I heard I had heard that a lot of the other robot teams had a big hand actually in, in getting you involved with the with the sport. So, you you know, you had the thing from from Mad Catter and there was also with uh, with Deep Six, right? Weren't they instrumental in getting you guys started? How did that come about? Dusty yeah, that influence. So, uh, for, yes, you can make a weapon really, that big. <laughs> <laughs> so, what really kicked off Jackpot is mm -hmm. uh, like, uh, Honey's really close with the production. And one mm -hmm. day she goes, Hey, if you guys want to get in, this is the oh. year because they're desperate for robots. And that's when really? me and Jeff really started looking at building. So, Jeff pulled up, uh, his CAD program and got in discord, which we have a discord with a bunch of the builders and a lot mm -hmm. of the builders that couldn't make it, uh, 2020 got in there and started helping us design jackpot. So we have oh, wow. a ton of designs from so many different teams. Uh, Dustin, the builder of deep six was uh -huh. one of the people that was in there the most. And, really pushing us for the bigger weapon and the heavier weapon and the more damaging weapon, which mm -hmm. I think it worked out really well for us. <laughs> I think it did. Yeah. I think Dustin's been really helpful too from like, cause he came, we had an event in January, uh, in 2020, uh, at the slot at a 702 RC raceway. And bunny came out for that. Like most of malice came out for that, uh, Dustin came out with a ridiculous, monstrous 
six pound, three pound robot that yeah. was just horrifying. <laughs> and oh, that's, wow. uh, Jeff has a part from that. And so oh after God. that event, we had so much fun and we went out to a uh, millennium fandom after that. And we were chatting about robots and talking to Dustin really enabled us to, or, you know, affirmed for, for us that we were doing some pretty cool stuff so like my build specifically doing the bristle bot was partly because he was like yeah you can do that you know this is crazy and a lot of the engineering i think that went into jackpot too because yeah. jeff's approach was so like direct i think a lot of the builders looked at it as like oh well if i could do it all over again mm -hmm. this would be a, a way to try you know try this try that and mm -hmm then he could process it into what it became. And I think you guys came up with some pretty clever solutions to problems that people might not have thought of. We had si yeah, simple solutions to complicated problems. We also <laughs> had some of the, the like really like the engineering teams yeah. come over and look at our robot and shake their heads. Just like oh, this really? is horrified. right. <laughs> yeah. horrified. Oh, supposed to do it this way. Horrified. Yeah. Not <laughs> disgusted, but horrified. <laughs> like, so in what way, just like, Oh, this isn't, this is not the way you're supposed to do that at all. Or was it more of a matter of like, um, this shouldn't work. <laughs> this shouldn't work. Well, it, I think Rusty sort of operated the same way too, because they used the same kind of motors we did. Mm -hmm. And we didn't have all the like baggage of being like, oh, these are the brushless or the brushed motors that you use. And this is the powerful thing to do. This is whatever. Like Jeff was like, oh, these are three inch motors that look like they're going to be strong enough. Mm -hmm. I can build around that. This is how this can work. This is how you use them. And it's having such a completely fresh perspective like that really, I think, is what mm -hmm. did it. Because you didn't go into it looking at what's the right way to do things. You yes. were looking at it. How can it? How can we do this? Yeah. Mm -hmm. well, one of the, the big things that people were like just shocked about was we ran serpentine belts for the weapon. And uh, we just glued a tube over our motors and oh, really? ran the serpentine belt on the tube. Yeah, so uh, it just huh. like this, and Wait. another one over here. Mm -hmm. this over here. Well, you had four okay. of them nested together. Oh, yeah, we had four of them nested. So just imagine there's four of these, and they were chained front to back. So it would be one here, one here. Then it mirrored on the other mm -hmm. side with the tube connecting the two front ones and mm -hmm. just the giant belt going across it. And wow. the way we tensioned it is literally I stood on the motor pod of Emily <laughs> while they tightened it. That's awesome. Oh my god. Wow. So so you when it you say a serpentine belt <laughs> when you say serpentine belt, do you mean like you didn't have two belts on it? You had one belt that was wound around twice? No, we had two belts. Uh oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, we just, we had a serpentine belt without any groove po profiles for it to actually grab onto, Got which it. Okay. kind of worked out for us because when we hit stuff, it would slip. Yep. Oh, that, so that was actually, the motors. One, yeah. that was one of the things I was going to ask you. Cause whenever you've got all that energy in a system, right, it's going to go somewhere. Like, you know, equal opposite reaction, blah, blah, blah. So, you know, I've got this thing spinning, you know, at, you know, 200 miles an hour tip speed and all of a sudden it, it comes to zero. Yeah. The other bot's going to take some damage, but so am I. So how, how do you mitigate that? So the, the slipping of the belts is a big one for us. And yeah. then we just uh, like, so those uprights are half inch AR 500, the bolts, what two inches. And then we have a sleeve two and a half inches around that. So we have a lot of just metal there to, to take There's that. There's a lot uh, of meat on the bone. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There, there really yeah. is a lot of meat on jackpot. Um, yeah. So we didn't, uh, and then we didn't run bearings. That was a, a, a big choice for us. That's one Dustin saved us on because uh, we ran bushings and when bearings fail, they'll lock up when bushings fail. They'll just like, it's just metal on metal. Yeah. So you can still spin afterwards. Wait, so you mean in the, in your main weapon, there weren't bearings? No, no, just bushings. 
Is that sorry? Huh. I am. Is that part of why they would scream? It wasn't necessarily just the vest, but like the spin up. That's part of the the squeak, the the squealing on the spin up. Is that Squeal kind of part of it? Though. That was the belt slipping on the tube. I can see that. Yeah. I knew it was coming uh, from there. <laughs> but I'm not sure how. <laughs> just all getting out of the rope. It was it was noise. <laughs> Sometimes, sometimes I really do wonder if if people machine their uh, the blades to whistle at a certain speed, because like like you know you take a about like uh, what is it Ice Wave is really good at this uh, Tombstone is really good at this when that thing speeds up and you hear that blade slicing through the air it's just like oh Omar's coming <laughs> if you've seen the wire uh, jackpot when you get jackpot at full speed it still makes that really deep yeah bump noise it's such a beautiful yeah. noise. Or high noise. Some make yeah. it, some don't. Is we our blade is you know it's twin and it's narrow like this, so it cuts through the air. But more like mm -hmm. a tombstone or a minotaur, all that they have a lot of surface area. They're pushing more air, yep. so they make a more deeper noise. Mm -hmm. Yeah, more bassy. So as the weapon operator, jackpot is ridiculously quiet when you spin up the weapon in the mm -hmm. arena because you have the walls and all that in between you yeah. and the robot so mm -hmm. a, a lot of times how you tell how fast the weapon is spinning is by the pitch of the yeah. uh, sound but mm -hmm. jackpot you really yeah. can't do that so it's a lot of you know i've been hitting full throttle for a little bit now so it should be at this kind of speed and you kind of look at gyro and that's how you how i have to guesstimate what the speed of the weapon is well, oh okay at least this year you don't have to worry about that because i think with the new new systems if we we do get everything for future versions of the robot uh you should be able to just full send it now no problem well gyro is going to be worse because we're going 50 uh, miles per hour faster yeah but we're also wider no, the weapon's the same weight. No, but our robot's wider. wider. Oh, yeah, yeah, wider. So yes. We have more mm. resistance to gyroscopic forces. So, our ninja attack in the chat says, having done things wrong, in quotation marks, this time, do you plan on changing it up for next season, or do you plan on forging ahead with the current style? I mean, it wasn't wrong if it worked. <laughs> So ain't broke. We're, yeah, so uh, we're pretty much keeping the weapon the same. We're changing to different motors, um, but one of the big just for the weapon. Yeah, right. one of the big things is is we're changing up the drive. We doubled the voltage going to the drive motors, and we uh, doubled the gear ratio. Um, mm. so it's going to drive the same speed. It's just going to have a lot more torque. Um, there's a video on the jackpot page of jackpot, like doing a zero point turn back and forth, which, uh, the old jackpot would struggle with, um, before we put it in the arena and the arena just made it worse. Mm. Wow. Uh, let's see, there was something else. In, well, and I think uh, part of what we we have changed a little bit was just, and part of why Jackpot, I think, functions so well going into it is we already had all the insight from people telling us kind of what's available and what you can do. And being mm -hmm. at the event, we, we could really soak up a lot more of that. And watching people react to Jackpot, where they would be like, oh, I'm going to use that or wow, that's a simpler way to do that. You could kind of get feedback on what they're already doing and if it's something we want to adopt. So like we knew we wanted different wheels and then we mm -hmm. can figure out which wheels are great. And then we're connected with those people. So you know what you can source and, you know, that that kind of made some resources more available, which helps a lot. This, so that's, I think seems, the oh. main changes we're doing is just making them more quality. Sorry, <laughs> I think that's it. Oh, no, we're not changing fine. too much of the approach. We're just, uh, you know... We're, we're getting we're getting the good stuff yeah Hopefully. it's it seems like you you mentioned about like how uh, everybody kind of works together and we were talking about that a little bit before the show um and, and i remember when uh oh who was it um go lightly uh uh witch doctor i remember she had a problem her team had a problem with the uh with their blade breaking and it sounded like it was because it was tool steel and it was hardened basically over hardened i think yeah yeah, yeah so she was using s7 tool steel and uh right. it's 
the the weapon power has gotten really really high you know over the last couple of years and uh tool steel has started to shatter now and uh, right. ar500 is actually a softer metal but it bends so it uh it, you know they'll last longer in fights um in fact right. if you look at the ghost raptor fight we uh bent one of our blades 10 degrees mm -hmm. um wow which yeah you did that's yeah. right well i mean you but you know at the same time though you should see the other guy because you know yes, <laughs> yeah, for sure <laughs> yeah I'm well not... <laughs> in an interesting tie-in for that because once they source that material and then chomp cut it for them and then at the end mm -hmm. of the event they didn't want to bring it all the way back to florida with them so we went in on it and so now we have that available for uh, a thicker weapon because that was something oh, that we, we wanted for like to have an answer for horizontals i think was the thing to have a have a one inch thick blade so mm -hmm. that worked too like the circle of life you know <laughs> that wound up coming <laughs> that, that wound up coming uh, our direction well, well and we are jumping all over the 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 stuff i have but but you you gave me a, a perfect segue into this the circle of life in robot combat it always seems like the weapon type goes through phases right because i remember a long time ago you know there were the the crusher bots were a thing and there was a you know there's a time period where flippers ruled everything and then tombstone comes along and now everybody's a horizontal spinner so it's like you know what 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 I guess I guess the first question is how much of that is just a cat and mouse game where you know you've got this guy comes out and he's a good one of X and so everybody starts trying to take that down you know like how how do you guys look at at that It's it's very rock paper scissors Yeah right. That's that's all of combat which is why so many robots now have different attachments like we like Shay was just mentioning about like always answer for horizontals Right. It's, I would say like some of the vertical spinners are more like a scissor rock type deal, but you know, I'd say they're, they they kind of have they're kind of good against both in certain mm -hmm. situations, but they'd be more like duck duck and more like the rock type. You know, it's just more pure defensive, yeah. and you'd have something like uppercut uppercuts all you know attack attack attack. <laughs> Yeah, you'd have, you'd that you'd thing is crazy. Stuff, then you would have more control robots, kind of like you know Hydra. Hydra is not out there being super tanky like Duck is, but they're not doing up super damage like Uppercut would. So you know it's kind of dynamics between three different the three different styles about going about it. However, there's always a shifting meta of the robots, which you see those at you know the smaller scale like this. Mm -hmm. the, the meta that's shifting in the beetle weights and all the smaller robots that are about you know anywhere from one to thirty pounds is being transferred yeah. up to the fifties. And now that there's more events on the smaller scale going on, we're having multiple iterations of two hundred fifty pounders before we even get to the next season. Yep. Oh, interesting. Um, so, so what you're saying is like basically the smaller bots are kind of the laboratory where everybody gets together. We okay, this is going to be the next meta, and then they yeah. go back and make the 250 pound. Yes, that's that's kind of what's going on there. Like three pounders will be prototypes for 30 pounders, then 30 pounders will be prototypes for 250 pounders. A good example of that would be um, if you look at Norwalk Havoc or Ro Ro well, not Robo Games, a uh, Motorama, you'd have Megatron. Megatron is a 30 pound version of Sawblaze. So they try. Oh, okay. And James and Go will make all these different iterations in Megatron to then transfer to Sawblaze. Same thing with, mm -hmm. with uh, Charles Guam and 30 Hall, which is a 30 pound version of Overall. So I will say the right now the the meta is four wheel drive verts and I think what makes four wheel drive vertical spinners so effective right now is it's really easy to make an attack an attachment for whatever you're fighting so it's really easy to make a wedge for a horizontal or really low wedgelets for other verts or control bots yeah. 
Well, okay. Well, so I guess part of the oh, shifting meta. Oh, sorry. Something that Jeff oh. has mentioned before is uh, like part of the shifting meta right now that Jackpot really took advantage of, and I think might be pushing more the boundary of is reach, because a lot of times, like you know, a compact blade has a lot of advantages, but when mm -hmm. you know Jackpot having twenty-two inch long blades, you have eleven inches of reach, whereas like. For Lockjaw, I forget what the stat was in the fight. I think it was, they said maybe three inches Oof. of reach. So we knew we could hit them first, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like in theory, yeah. you know, that that's kind of the goal. And I right. think we're going to see more of that, of how, like, not just how, how fast you can punch somebody, but how far your arm can reach is... Yeah. is part of the punch i do want to take a quick moment and uh, and mention that this is on behalf of the sin shop uh, the sin shop is a maker hacker space located in las vegas nevada uh we offer the tools and equipment that you can use to make pretty much whatever your little heart desires now uh, if you'd like to come and check out the shop if that sounds like something that's awesome you'll come see it uh well i'm afraid that we're currently mostly closed for construction right now although some of our members are dutifully keeping the shop open uh for our members now if you'd like to come check it out go to sinshop.org forward slash discord and uh you can uh, check out the shop build out channel to find out exactly when uh there will be somebody there to let you in and let you take a look around and uh you can also go to sinshop.org for more information on the shop and uh and find out more about it that way one thing w w that was surprising about battle bots uh i mean for us we had to fix some design issues, but, um, you know, it was spending two weeks working on that bot all the time. Um, mm -hmm. uh, now jackpot was a special case because our drive was having so much issues. Um, I would say easily, um, jackpot spent the most time in the test box trying to get the drive just perfect. And we never quite got there, but we got pretty good. Um, in the lockjaw and rotator fights. Uh, I think hmm. the rotator fight was that was the best robot ever driven. It's a shame that we weren't able to show the drive a little bit more, but we took a gamble and lost. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> One way or another, we were going to deal with some hits. <laughs> Absolutely. And the self rider yeah. might not have been able to to have saved us in that situation. Oh, that's or right. We'd have been you in a totally down. different predicament. You fell down the exact opposite side that your self rider was on, wasn't it? In that fight? Yeah. No. We had the, to sacrifice the self rider for the wedge. No, they were talking about a um, uh, what's it? Deadlift. Deadlift. Yeah. Deadlift. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Deadlift. Yeah. Okay. So deadlift was one of those ones. Is uh, we didn't catch something. The we did something stupid and we hammered the bushings into the weapon. So it mm -hmm. fit tightly on the shaft. So uh, when we hit that wall, the weapon locked up and it locked up in such a way that when we fall over, uh, it keeps us on our sides because if the weapons uh, like horizontal to the ground, yeah. we'll roll to our back. Um, mm -hmm. but you know, it was just one of the things that the weapon locked up and we were after jackpots weapons locked up, we were kind of done anyways, but yeah, that was a little bit of fresh, uh, frustrating one for us. Oh, absolutely. Because there was a lot more money on the line in that tournament than there was in the main tournament. <laughs> yes. Yeah. There, meaning there was money at all. Yeah. <laughs> oh, is that right? Yeah. There was a lot more in bounty hunters. There, there was more incentive for everyone to get that big cash pool. And, you know, we had that chance to fight Tombstone and we didn't get the. We really it. wanted that. There, oh, you know, yeah. Oh, that was the boy. bounty for us, man. We were so excited about Tombstone. Speaking oh, that would have been so outs, cool. What's that? I, I said, speaking of callouts, I think if we didn't make it through Rotator, Endgame wouldn't have been the champion this year. <laughs> I, I, I really do agree. I think Endgame, I think we would have had a good counter against Endgame. Sorry, Jack, mm -hmm. I love you, but I think we would have beat your robot. <laughs> 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 only one way to find out now <laughs> there you go there you go there's the only way you could possibly find out is if you came back on another season but we don't know i definitely have the ground game on us but yeah we've got yeah. really long arms we've got long you. arms that's right yeah like like i guess that's one of the things like with uh with uh um like fighting up against something like mammoth you know like yeah they, you want to talk about a reach that's ridiculous
We yeah. really wanted to fight them too. We yeah. were really hoping that we'd get an exhibition fight on them too. I was really hoping we were in that witch doctor bounty because we had Malice in there, which we're really good. We're really good pit buddies for Malice, and I, mm-hmm. I was originally on Malice before Jackpot started. Mm-hmm. So, and I mean, Jackpot does owe its existing like part of the magic that made that primordial suit bubble was money. Yeah. She seems like this, I, the nicest person. Uh, she is. is. She, she's yeah. amazing. Yeah, she'll yeah. do anything for you. She'll move mountains for someone. Yeah, she actually oh. put together our at, our application slideshow for the for jackpot last year. Um Damn. which yeah, she uh she's the reason that jackpot was at BattleBots at all. Is that right? Yeah. That is that is just and, so cool. Yeah, she's 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 an she's an insane amount of energy in in a in a very productive channel. It's just amazing. Wow, that's awesome. So okay, so but we want to fight them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, we're still gonna tear them. Well, you know, that, that reminds me. So, like, if you, uh, I'm trying to like think of how to ask this. You know, you've got these. Oh, is it? I asked your question. So watch it in the VOD. But I asked your question. It was like one of the first ones I asked. But but it's in there. Um, all right. So, uh, you know, if you're close friends with someone. How does that make it harder for you to go out and just destroy several tens of thousands of dollars of their stuff? I think it makes it easier. <laughs> yeah, I, I would say the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> like, no, no, nothing on Robert. But like, if me and Robert fight each other, like, we're, you know, the other person not going to be able to tap out. <laughs> yeah. I think, I think the thing to think about is like, it's all problem solving. Right. So like, you're mm-hmm. not thinking about how can I, you know, run up their tab. It's, you know, what's the way that I can get this to happen. Mm-hmm. And once you're in that headspace, you're not in the, you're not, you're not in the, Oh no, I hurt my friend anymore. It's like, why can't I make it move forward? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, I, I, I would have to say like, uh, the thing about combat robots is you have to enter the sport thinking, you know, I'm going to go to this event and I'm not, I'm going to come home with a bag of parts or right. even less. So yeah. I think, you know, with that kind of added, like with everybody coming in with that kind of attitude, um, it makes for a really welcoming community um, mm-hmm. because, you know, people get super serious about it, but no one's like, Oh, you, you, you did this to my robot and I'm mad at you now. Um, unless you do, you know, hit like after budget. someone's clearly out, you hit them some more like, a. Oh, we could have, if, if we had gone after ghost Raptor again, that would have been a dick move. Right. Yeah. yeah. Like yeah. So kind of ghost thing. Raptor could still move, uh, if he wanted to, but mm-hmm. he, you, what you do is when you're done, you just stop moving your robot and you get counted out. Right. Right. If, if, yeah, uh, honestly, Robert, if they could, t- if they were started wiggling again, I was going to go in. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm so, That's why I parked it right there because I, I was like, you're still twitching, so there's still some life there. <laughs> he's he's wiggling. I saw it move. I saw it move. He was headed right for us. We <laughs> yeah, had to do I, it. It blinked. It blinked at me, I swear. <laughs> yep. I that's right. Like the hardest people to fight wouldn't be your friends. It's 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 finding kids, little kids. Because you know, we're all still in the same oh. bracket. And, and I personally haven't done it yet, but I know of friends that have that, you know, you beat their robot, then you feel bad yeah. because they're sobbing afterwards. Oh, no. Oh, that's terrible. But I hear way more stories about about kids beating adults, yes. you know, like especially yeah. at Norwalk. Oh, my gosh. In the small dog game, never <laughs> oh, underestimate yeah. a six year old. Are you talking <laughs> never about underestimate. someone in particular? <laughs> So, uh, uh, well, we had we yeah. had a six year old at a at our dust up event, and he was fearless. And I mean, he they didn't yeah. they didn't do super well, yeah. but like even against a uh, uh, Billy is one of the best you know three pounders that was there. And or yeah. was it Billy or was it which one was it? It was I the one pounder. Billy's best, one of the best. Oh, Billy's uh, one pounder is two B. Two B, yeah, yeah and. And this six-year-old just gunned it straight. This robot was barely moving. He's like, I'm going for it. <laughs> <laughs> went straight into the horrifying 2B blade. It was, it was 
it was beautiful. Yeah. Oh, wow. But that's yeah. kind of the attitude is you want to do something that looks awesome. Yeah. More than anything. But also, I don't want to play any thing. of the children in slap box at Norwalk. I just don't want to. They're scary. Uh, I could only begin to imagine, <laughs> like, like what's that? Who's that kid that was, uh, like, Ray Billings' protege? Um, Tyler. Tyler's a crazy driver. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. I, I ended up facing Tyler at Norwalk. And then I faced the, immediately after that fight, I faced the slap box kid. And I yeah. lost to both of them. Oh, oh, yeah. oh no. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it was one of those things where like three days before the event, I realized I messed something up and I couldn't yeah. change it. So it was just like, oh. well, we'll see what happens. And what happened was I got beaten really, really badly. <laughs> Oof. So we, I would we were say, about, I would oh, say oh, Annika from Slapbox is the scariest, uh, young driver at this point uh -huh. with dark princess and a few other, they have a few other bots at Norwalk, but that's, I think the one to watch, like she drove the mini bot for slap box and she controlled the flames in the Sharko fight or just, mm -hmm. just roasted, just rotisserie Sharko nice. as they're waving it around in the air. And, uh, when she's driving small bots, it's intimidating and wow. you can see her soldering in the pits too. Like, you know, and how old is she? Yeah. Never underestimate. I think she's like nine. Never oh underestimate the kids. Never. Oh, I don't, I wow. don't. Yeah. I expect no, to be beaten by. <laughs> yeah. Point. No, you, you, you definitely can't underestimate the kids. Like, yeah, that is, that is the thing. Like, you know, when I was growing up, it was, it was, I'm totally dating myself now, but when I was growing up, it was setting the VCR clock, right? I was the only one in the house that they could get to, to stop flashing 12 <laughs> o'clock. I'm, I'm, I'm that old, but, um, the, uh, you know, so, but it's like every generation is like, how in the hell are you doing that? Like, you know, kids, kids now are, you know, like, oh yeah, no, I just programmed AI to do my homework. What? <laughs> you know, so cool. But no, uh, so we were talking about, uh, uh, people getting, uh, you know, getting into, oh, we, holy crap. That's the first hour. We just did the first hour. It's time for the post game, but you know what? Uh, you, you guys want to just keep rolling or you, you need a break or. I'm good with this. I keep don't rolling. want to tell you how long I can talk about robots. <laughs> All right. Well, let's keep rolling. Then. <laughs> only one so, here that's Robert, are you working yeah. tomorrow? No, I'm off. Okay. Yes, yeah, I am, but I am also a vampire. So okay. party time. No right, wheels, then. no mercy. Yeah. I'm good. For <laughs> All right. All right yeah. Cool. Cool. All right. So then uh, one thing I wanted to, to cover this because I wanted to see what you guys think. And also it involves someone that you are that, that you're familiar with is it, it going all the way back to what was it? Uh, I think it might have been the very first season of the new battle bots, complete control versus Ghost Raptor. You remember this match? The net? Uh, yes, the net. Yeah, the net. The net. Uh, I mean, yeah. Yeah. So we would there, never do that oh. with a glitter pinata. Never. <laughs> Ever. No. Never. No. Never. Not us. No. Nope, not, not us. We would never well, do that. Well that was, so that was like that was kind of my opener to that is is you know <laughs> it, it seems like every season there's somebody that does something that requires a rule to be to be written. Oh, I and, see uh, <laughs> So because, I mean could, that's that's robot. Ahead competition all co robot competitions as event organizers that's something we worry about too well oh yeah I, we're we're really free and loose with what we allow so we, 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 because we know that if we're not it's going to happen anyway yeah. so we set the expectation that something crazy is going to happen but that way other builders coming in know hey we want to see crazy unconventional drives so you're going to face a six pound robot if it's going to not have wheels no. like that's a you know mm. that way people know that non or unconventional drive usually gets a weight bonus of some kind. And we're really generous with that yeah, because yeah. we want to see things that are on wheels. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So like if you look at any robot competition, the designers are designing to the rules. So if they find a, a loophole, they are definitely going to take that as far as they can. Yes. Uh, and uh, it, it's definitely one of those things that, um, and with robot competitions, it's hard to like retroactively make rules because someone designs 
like when you bring a robot, it's done and someone mm-hmm. designed something for those rules. So you're stuck yeah. until you yeah. make a new, until you have a new competition. Right. So, uh, yeah, robot people are all about finding those rules that, um, you know, are going to, they're all about finding the loopholes that need a rule being made to keep it from happening again. But also if you get a really frustrating circumvent, like if somebody circumvents the rules in a really frustrating way, Mm -hmm. they know that you really only have the element of surprise on that once. And so in the future, people are going to know, Oh, you might do that. I got an answer for that. Mm -hmm. And if you don't continue to escalate, (laughs) you're gonna, you're, you know, there's only so often, there's only so many times you can, uh, expect to get away with something when people are going to design for what their problem is they're facing. Uh, a great example of that is I'm sure a lot of people want to hear this is the, the bike rack from, uh, Hydra. Um, what? Oh, I didn't. What? I haven't yeah. heard, heard that. There what? was a, <laughs> the, the, the bike rack for huge. I, you know, it was a great attachment, you know, and with the rules written the way they were, they could get away with not using their weapon. Um, so the rules are going to change, but I, I know huge has In theory. Plans. Yeah. We don't have details on it though. Yeah. I, I they're, know they're huge, making nebulous statements about it. Yeah. Huge has plans for a bike rack if it shows up. Oh, really? Yeah. You know what's oh. better than one bike rack? Two bike racks. No, I, I, I have no idea what it is. <laughs> well, and he posted something about that too, but I don't think, uh, yeah, I think it's a fool me once, you know. Yeah. Can't get fooled again. Me, shame on me kind of thing. Yeah. That's my opinion on it. <laughs> fool me, can't get fooled again. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. You, just, you just can't. <laughs> Yeah. No. It, it, so uh, my my understanding, and somebody actually asked this earlier. Uh, what was it? Something like how much? Uh, yeah. There we go. How much weight was allocated to glitter? Was the question. I don't have a scientific yeah. answer for you. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. But <laughs> I will say I didn't think about it because I knew we were underweight. <laughs> so, the main the main thing is because we use like a mylar glitter and then mm-hmm. a nice sequiny glitter over that yeah. and a lot of clear coat so mm-hmm. in a perfect world uh clear coat I, I can minimize that a little bit more because i like how it flaked off initially i was thinking oh i should do like a better adhesion thing so that it sticks better but also in some of the still photos that we got from you yeah. know the the action photographer you can see the little little red flakes in the air I mean, and just like you can't beat that we gotta keep doing that they didn't say anything to us about there being too much glitter on the floor so well, i'm gonna loosen her up next year i'm not gonna send that weight on the clear coat let me just just throw her on it's gonna be fine uh, it wasn't one of the the interviews with peter they did didn't they mention that they were still finding glitter flakes when they were tearing down the arena yeah the way he described it i don't think it was our glitter yeah so i'm gonna uh, say that anyway because we never pulled any like i think i pulled a couple of burnt out flakes from the motors because between fights like we mm. take everything apart clean everything out make sure that you know if anything needed to be taped up or anything we'd do that and mm. i was afraid of uh being responsible for like you know the ribot foam was really debilitating and everybody hated it last year mm. because it got into everybody's robots whether you fought them or not it was in the arena and you were going to be cleaning it out of your robot and i did not want the glitter to be like that also when applying the glitter the spray paint tent is a shared area and you oh. just you gotta contain that because like tombstone would be spray painting their wheels next to where i'm you know <laughs> being my sparkly little self and i was like i'm not being so shay was the, the one to get glitter on his wheels i'm just not so Shay was the, not, the not glitter queen of battle bots. Um, you know, uh, unfortunately you didn't get to see it, but she did a spectacular job glittering up one of captain shredderator's shells. Um, hopefully oh, really? you'll get so to beautiful. see it next year. Yeah, it's it so is beautiful. absolutely gorgeous. So that one hopefully took he'll glitter. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Open up with that shell. Uh, they'll probably open up the season with that shell, depending on who they go up against. 
we we did offer we did offer uh, complimentary glitter makeovers to anyone who'd take them. Sub Zero accepted some glitter. Malice used a little bit of the glitter gold on purple paint. They just needed mm-hmm. a touch up. They already had glitter on there, but just, you know, sometimes <laughs> you need a little extra. Well, you know. And then yeah, yeah Shredderator yeah. Shredderator gave us the most uh, the most freedom and didn't regret it. So I don't what, think. What, <laughs> so the I was going to ask you. Mark, oh, go ahead. Follow up on what Marsh was saying about uh, tombstone and glitter. Funny story. Yeah. Uh, we okay. were headed by the main walkway, so everyone, did, you know, as they were walking out to go work on their stuff outside to go grind and all that, uh, you know, Ray would always walk by back and forth. And every time he'd walk by, he'd say, "Hey, we're gonna put glitter on your robot." And it got to the point where, like, he walked by, he looked at us like dead, dead in the eye, and said, "There's no glitter touching my robot." <laughs> well, it's funny because like i the first time because i mentioned like at one point i was going out to the spray paint and he was coming back from i think he was doing the wheels and i you know i was carrying all the glitter and i'd only had one brief interaction with him earlier where he thought that i was a pa or something and so i was just like hey uh i have some spare red glitter if you need some and he was like uh <laughs> like <laughs> Uh. It was he. He did a moment of processing, like and politely declined. So no, 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 thank you. That's okay. But then Loading response. I told the guys about because, like, I hadn't, I hadn't mean meant to, you know, put him on the spot or anything. But it was just really funny. Oh, and uh, funny. I think I said, if you need to borrow some glitter, which is an even more horrifying prospect, never, okay. never accept used glitter. Don't, don't get, <laughs> don't take it back. But. <laughs> Then yeah, I told the guys about it, so they they kept giving him a hard time, and I hope he knows I didn't actually want to put glitter on Tombstone. <laughs> I wasn't really trying to put glitter on your stuff, <laughs> man. I very, very, I very, I very conscientiously did not let glitter touch Tombstone stuff. But oh, that's funny. So, it was fun. so it was fun. Um, we definitely, definitely what. Oh, definitely. Oh, had no, it, yeah, yeah. We, def- we definitely, we definitely did that. We definitely did yeah. glitter, <laughs> nice. and we will definitely keep doing it as long as they let us. Nice. Dear God. So, yeah. so is there a rule that you're like, oh my God, I cannot stand that rule. Like, uh, no, thank you. You know, is there something you'd rather see them not enforce? The weapon uh, limits, they have a weight and tip speed limit of 250 miles an hour and 80 mm-hmm. pounds and i because uh, uh deep six 2019 was punching mm. holes in the floor it so, was i remember that yeah so they made that rule um and it, it's kind of i you know i wish they would allow us to go faster and heavier and just hit a lot harder mm-hmm. it went through the steel floor didn't harder. it that's the thing yeah. is in the arms race of because things are so much more powerful now and you can pack mm-hmm. that kind of power there's it's hard to k- make an arena that can keep up with that yeah. so they're not really making those rules to protect other robots or anything it's just to it's the people and and they and they do they do that with fire too they're kind of restrictive about where you can hit fire you know mm-hmm. that's a big consideration for them I think that's one mm. thing I would like to see them do is they um, get rid of the, the f- I bl- believe the length of the fire is roughly defined what five or four foot from the front of the robot. Yeah. I mean, no one follows that rule. They, they, yeah, they, they have to. Yeah. They've been strict about it. The only one that they kind of let it happen is free shipping, but you, they weren't there this year, so we can't really speak, speak for them on that, but they were out in the pits, say, um, testing the fire and making sure it didn't go past four foot on most of the robots. Hmm. Yeah. yeah. They, well, they're, they're taking their arena walls really seriously. Yeah. That's for sure. Mm-hmm. That's Especially a, with uh, the hits can, that they have to take, they don't want them to get weakened at all. Oh yeah. You know, and, and like, yeah. it's interesting, like watching battle bots and then actually going there. Um, mm-hmm. Like captain shredderator has a notoriously bad record, but Seeing Captain Shredderator in person is absolutely terrifying. It's a hundred. It's a hundred and twenty pounds spinning at 
250 miles an hour. They're, they're the biggest weapon in the competition. Mm. And when they hit things, it just like one of the reasons tombstone, uh, not tombstone captain Schrader or Raider doesn't look like it's doing a lot of damage is it just cuts through things like it's not there and it doesn't mm. slow down the shell at all. It is ridiculous. <laughs> Yeah. Well, and they tank. they manage oh, to like imp- they they impact welded like parts of the test box to the tooth at certain points. Like if they were you know spinning around and clip the wall in the test box, like everything shook. Like it was just crazy. And uh, yeah, it's really hard to understand the scale of a bot like Shredderator and, and, until you're in person. And part of that is the sound is absolutely horrifying. Yeah, is that right? and also it's so concentrated. Cause it's so low to the ground. It's only like four inches tall. It's a wow. crazy robot. Yeah. Yeah, that, yeah. That's a lot of power in a very, very small space. Yeah. Uh, Art Ninja Tech says, uh, Chris Rose and Kenny Florian would have already died 87 times if that box couldn't hold up. Yeah. And, and that's cause that's why they have tip speed limits. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Makes sense. Uh, Spin Wizard says, that. Uh, oh, go ahead. I'll say, uh, especially like in like, on TV, they're neat, but in person is when you get that full, like, whoa, these things are, like, terrifying. It's, I'm sure. It's it's hard to replicate that feel on TV. Like, like a good example is that fire that was on a um, Black Dragon when it was on fire for, like, three minutes. Or, but at most of oh, time, insane. you were able to – Yeah, like, yeah. We were in those opera boxes, and you can feel the heat coming off those robots from that distance. Oh. You can feel the even through- and, yeah. Then when that was a great one to watch. That was that was really amazing. You can feel like the sound wave hitting you, like, you deep in the chest. Like mm-hmm. it's the same difference of like going to a race in person rather than watching it on TV. You can feel all the noises and the impacts and all the crazy stuff that's like deep, deep in your body. It's weird. I think part of the the like being there in person versus seeing it on TV too like there's a lot of tropes that people want to put like allocate bots as or category oh it's another four wheel drive vert like there's no robot that I would say that I saw there you know me not having a ton of experience but I didn't see any like that followed a mold there's like two shell spinners, completely different robots. You would never, right. you can't interchange a single part on them. You know, right. like Malice is kind of more like Tombstone <laughs> than anything else, but it's nothing like Tombstone. Mm-hmm. And it solves the problems of how to transfer that energy so differently. So I think that's mm-hmm. something that like you might need to see different robots in person to appreciate how different they all are. Mm-hmm. And like, yeah, yeah four wheel drive vert, but we're nothing like Endgame but you can say that because it's technically a rectangle with a death bit on front, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Huh. Uh, I, I, in games, the ones with the, they're, they're the ones that ended up winning, right? Or am I? Yeah. Of a, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Is it just me or does their bot looks like someone took the lid off of a record box and flipped it over? Like the, the bottom <laughs> of it looks like an old anvil case. You know what I'm talking about? Like they used to ki- carry records around in them. I don't know. I don't, they they make everything like they even wind their own motors. I want to say they make was, their own speed controllers. They do everything from scratch. It's been chance. Yeah. To my just by chance look like yeah. yeah. We did uh, help so them enough. cut vinyl logos for it for it though. That was our claim to fame. I brought my little awesome. cricket vinyl cutter. So I think four of the bots in the top eight had my vinyl on them. So there you go. I <laughs> <laughs> you know, I've been known to I've been known to cut some vinyl. Not a big deal. That's pretty awesome. You know, uh, need, another you. anybody need some vinyl? I got some vinyl for you if you want. Uh, another question from a yo-yoer. Uh, why is there so much crossover between robot combat and yo-yoing? Because there are a lot of teams. I noticed that. Yeah, it's, I think the two main there would be uh, Zach Goff and. Oh, yeah, Zach Lytle, 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 Scorpius, yeah, uh, and then Scorpius. Alex, Alex Satori, yeah, yeah, Alex and the um, Zach, yeah, they're they're both competitive yo-yoers that have both fought, like, well, not fought, but competed against each other in a um, yo-yo World Cups and stuff like that. Well, Jeremy, 
Jeremy is too. And the small builders. Yeah. Small yeah. builders. There's well in Jeremy's joined a uh, uppercut too, I think. Yeah. I think yeah Jeremy's an uppercut. Combat robots like competition. Mm-hmm. And there's so many ways, different ways of competing that eventually you're going to have some type of overlap. Well, and you've got physics, you've got being super competitive and fucking around with physics. Well, it's, it's, what more do you need? You know, it's the same too. Like with the, um, there's a lot of competitive Smash players that are in. It's just any type of like competition. Like there's a bunch of RC racers that you know regularly tour and race cars. It's they like competition, and that's why mm-hmm. they're there. They're there to compete. Um, so speaking of, uh, oh, go ahead. So I uh, uh, just, you know, uh, one of the things um, for combat robots, if you go, if you ever go to the small robot events, um, the amount of power small robots put down is shockingly high. Jeff yeah. robot he, uh, off track has the same power as an AK 47 off track, right? Yeah, off tra- I think I'll, yeah, off track can a. Um, I think how how heavy is that? Uh, yeah, that test nut that we hit like two pounds. Yeah, something like so that. It can hit that uh, steel uh, lug nut that weighs about two pounds, and it shoots to the ceiling like less than a half a second. So the that's showing how much force is going into it. Like the arena right. is about four foot tall, and less than like a few frames it's in the ceiling and back down on the ground it's these the forces and these bots are nuts and, and the sounds yeah. are crazy well, if off tracks mm-hmm. upside down it sounds like oh, yes it's, it's yeah it sounds like a heck. <laughs> i i swear jeff you make <laughs> robots that like attack the arena floor just as much as the opponent you literally <laughs> made a hammer saw robot I don't Ooh. think you get to throw stones anymore, <laughs> Robert. I don't think you do. <laughs> I don't think that you do. I just have very thin gashes in the floor. That's all I leave. Jeff leaves like marks across the whole arena. Yeah, but they're superficial. <laughs> you know, it is but a scratch. So, yeah. so uh, you need to speaking of d- it anyway. Yeah. Right. So speaking of, of, of designing robots, uh, another person on our discord asked earlier this week, how would you design a battle bot to fight jackpot? He said, asking for a friend. <laughs> Undercutter one side uh, forks on the other side. <laughs> uh, I, I mean, for next year, um, mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, don't give away all your cuts. Uppercut's probably a bad matchup for us next year. I um, that, because uh, Uppercut plays our game better than we do. They have more range than us. Um, we might be more drivable, though. Yes, Uppercut is very tipsy. So if we were to fight Uppercut, we would try to get to the sides of Uppercut. Um, mm. Because if they spin up their weapon and they try to turn, they'll fall over. Yeah. So, um, I think uppercut would be a bad one. Um, I think if double jeopardy got really lucky because we don't, uh, and shot straight down the center of our robot, it would Mm -hmm. take out our whole weapon system. Um, those, those are the two I really have a fear of. What about you, Jeff? Oh, I'm going to follow up on Uppercut because we didn't want to leave BattleBots for the working robot. We were trying to talk with production, but they were filming all the bounty hunters and all the other stuff. So they didn't really have time for any, you know, not official matches. So we, but we went up to a uh, Alex and they were, they were going to put the big blade on Uppercut and we were supposed to go out there and, you know, see who would not, leave for the robot <laughs> well i believe what they said was will you let us hit your robot with this and we're like yeah we'll fight you and they're like mm, that's not how this is gonna go <laughs> oh. <laughs> but at that point i don't think they realized that we were uh driving as well or maybe they just wanted to hit our frame yeah. i think that was probably it they're kind of like hey can we can we can we hit something yeah. and we're like yeah we'll fight you and they're like mm, or that yeah <laughs> So, so we, wait, why, can, why would they not want to fight you? Were they concerned that 
like what was their? I think they just wanted to test out the the weapon. So, they, I think they just wanted to hit a chassis, honestly, because that have... that weapon was going to be really. So uppercut really had fun. um a disc, which is a much uh, an eighty pound disc, uh, which is a much more efficient way to store kinetic energy because you have more mass spinning faster on the outside. Um, so it was their their hardest hitting disc and uh, uppercut has some ridiculous motors on it. It's two Prius motors they're using, right, Jeff? I don't believe so. Yeah. I it, it's either a Prius motor or it's based on the same system that's inside of it. They have custom motors and custom ESEs. A Prius motor. Yeah. Like you don't mean like the, motor. like enough from to move a what? A car. Like enough to move a car. It is. Oh, 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 I was thinking. You, oh no, that's just a brand name. That's not actually a like a, a a Prius. They're not taking a motor out of a Prius. No, you're telling me yes, they are taking a motor out of a Prius. Uh, I can tell you that. Yes. Wow. Okay. <laughs> Electric stronger than gas. So the, Electric the is motor, stronger than gas. <laughs> so the motors Jeez. Jeff has are for the they run them in go karts at like pole position and stuff like that. So wow. we're running two of those for the weapon motor, the weapon next year. That is so small. I've I've been to pole position before. Those cars ain't no joke, and that's 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 the size of the motor that's running that. That was the funny thing about when when we first like were posting the build, like when we first started, and we're like, oh, we're epoxying the motors today, blah, and we'd post pictures, and people be like, mm -hmm. are you sure that those motors can? you know, drive a robot. And we're like, well, they're supposed to carry 250 pound people. So mm -hmm. probably four of them will work. <laughs> you I know, love, I love your voice for those people. I, I know exactly who you're talking about. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God. I mean, and I, we we <laughs> like those questions because a lot of people did, you know, at the event too, they're like, Oh, that really worked kind of thing. But yeah, the, the reason Jeff picked those motors was what their application was indicated that they could be doubled up for this and yeah. hey paid off uh, i've been noticing a lot of new robots this year are using the same motors we used i know mm -hmm. um a few uh, like what is it uh two-headed deaf flamingo uh, i think the mm -hmm. flamingo already ran those though because they were more popular in the uk scene oh, okay were. yeah hmm. And there was something uh, that you were reacting to today, Robert, that was from last April, too. And Rusty found them, like, a few people, I think, who started their design journey on eBay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think found these motors and were like, why not? Yeah. yeah. Jeff, do you know how much mini mags cost? Um, like, long mags, like what you would see in Bike Force, are like $400 a motor plus. Yeah, and ours yeah. were like seventy bucks a motor. Yeah. Wow. So yeah, yeah, how our, much of? Yeah, I was just gonna say, how our, awesome was it? I'm sorry. Go ahead. There's a there's a little bit of a lag. Go ahead. <laughs> then uh, it's the same thing with like a speed controller. Like the speed controllers that uh, drive the motors in like bike force are about yeah. two hundred plus a piece, and you know they're hard to come by. The motor, the ESCs that we run for jackpot are straight out of uh, like what you'd use in a hoverboard or one of those like electric scooters. Yeah. So they're and, and those run how much? Yeah, yeah, because you can get a whole hoverboard for two hundred bucks. If you're yeah, or less. Spots, you can get a hoverboard for even cheaper. Like you can get. Uh, this, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Nothing. Yeah, well, well, that's freaking awesome. So, so when you were designing everything, right? Did you have a specific bot in? Oh, oh, wait. Well, you know what? I was going to ask this first because it's it's closer to to what we were talking about. When you watched that video again, I've had I've had situations like this where I was able to watch what I did after I did it. It's a long story. It's a different different show entirely. But I was able to watch myself perform from earlier in the night, and it was awesome. When you got back, you know, either to, well, you probably didn't see it until months later, but when you saw the guy who was brought on there to be the robot expert and they asked him, you know, so what do you guys, what do you guys think about this, this jackpot thing? 
and he was like they are a real threat like how did that make you guys feel like watching that guy who's been in this for years be like these guys over here you watch out i think in the big like i was gonna actually get a tie this into what we were talking about with uppercut a minute ago is at the beginning yeah. of the competition everyone is like oh it's just you know this rookie team and you know they barely survived their first fight to oh man these guys might be able to go all the way so yeah. like that progression over the course of like you know eight days mm-hmm. really like say imagine if these guys had you know time to actually build this thing rather than just four weeks yeah. And I think before the Sub Zero fight, too, Pete had said something about, like, oh, you know, because he'd seen us in the test box, because he would do like a loop around and check on people and chat with people, like, hey, what are you concerned about? What are you really excited about? Kind of thing yeah. like that to get a gauge on things, which I think he had done in former years to like kind of feed to Chris and Kenny, but since he had more airtime. And so when at the Sub Zero one, when he's like, oh, yeah, we're, you know, people are saying in the pits that they're the next deep, ro- uh, deep roll, Jesus. Uh, death roll yeah well no death roll was the thing you said on on the thing and we were like i was just like what because we got a lot of jokes about that for the color scheme mm-hmm. and being a vert and all that but that he said that was just, i was kind of floored i think though the most interesting thing to me that we wound up hearing after was mm-hmm. uh the vex interview with jeff um they did a thing where they interviewed donald hudson and also Mm -hmm. jeff separately about the lockjaw fight and hearing donald hudson talk about his impression of jackpot and what we did was really impactful for me like that gave me a, a really new perspective on what's so remarkable about the way you guys think and the way you approached it and it just kind of made me feel like more um, more excited about the community as a whole, that he was looking at our, our performance and looking at how he must have impacted each of yeah. us, you know, to get us to for the people point that we haven't seen it For people that haven't seen me, can you walk us through oh, like, like basically what he said? Yeah, no problem. Um, the main like, thing that really stuck with me was he said, um, like watching well i'll actually ask let you ask your question because i'm trying to think the specific words and i don't want to get it wrong oh no well that was the question yeah no i was just just wondering if if you know uh if you could remember like you know what exactly it was that he said that it was something to the wasn't it something to the effect of you know they the you you had mentioned something about the way they solve problems was one of the things that he called out specifically so you don't have to get exactly we're not going to quote you on it I know uh, on the interview, like he uh, was talking about uh, like he watched some of our live streams of us putting jackpot together. And that was, like, was, yeah. And he was like, wow, that's a really neat idea. And uh, he's like, ah, it's uh, looking pretty good, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> and he also talked about like, you know, we were, we had those forks and those forks didn't work for us. So we never ran them again. Um, yeah. and, uh, you know, he was talking like his teammates were sitting there like, Oh, he's, they're going to use the forks. They're going to use the forks. And, uh, uh, Donald's like, no, they're smarter than that. They're not going to run the forks and just run straight into, you know, run straight <laughs> for it. You know, he, he he did was, say some wonderful things for us and he uh yeah. you know one the things you don't see is like we were struggling to put our robot together in time for that fight and um, <laughs> i went over to donald hudson i'm like hey we're, we're having trouble and he's like don't worry about it it's fine we're gonna pretend like we need to put our robot together so production's not gonna bother you and i was like Oh, thank you so much. And like, oh, wow. Um, yeah. Uh, you know, and, that was that was intended to be a main event fight when yeah. they scheduled it. Oh, yeah. We it was intended to be a main event. And then, of course, when Tombstone Scorpius happened, like we were happy to take the midway major <laughs> to that. Yeah. But that whole time, you know, production was like pressuring us about it. And that was an interesting time too. I, I just want to give a quick shout out to Vita because I know they took a lot of flack this season, but honestly, Gabe yeah. was so great for us. 
with that Mm -hmm. in the lead up to that fight because we were really stressed out about time and we didn't understand how to communicate with production what our realistic time constraints were going to be so we were really stressed out about like okay well if this thing we're about to try doesn't work it could be three hours and the night before it had taken hours and hours of iteration so we didn't want to tell them we'll be ready in 45 minutes when we were afraid of what it could be but they just needed Mm -hmm. a 45 minute answer kind of thing. And so Gabe stepped in and literally coached us on, here's how you answer this. This is what, you know, estimate your time this way, pad it a little bit. And if you don't make it by the time you get there, you address it then. Don't bring all the baggage of what you're afraid you're gonna, how you're afraid you're going to fail. Like the worst case scenario, don't bring that to this. Just give them a mathematical answer, Mm -hmm. you know, optimistic, but realistic and keep it, keep it friendly. Like don't have the most stressed yeah. out person. Don't have the person who's working the hardest be the one who answers the question in that moment. And, uh, that's some life like lesson stuff was, right there. Oh, yeah. he, they, well, and and I, he was I, just I, bored in the battery tent, you know, yeah. and he saw it struggling. <laughs> and I mean, his, his help was just invaluable. That was one of my favorite things from the experience because it was yeah. the potential to go so horribly wrong. Yeah. And you know, he didn't have to do that. That was, yeah. that was a big, like that really helped us. And uh, like, I, I still like his answer. The best is, you know, you know, think about how much time it, it's probably going to take and then mm-hmm. add an hour or two to it. And then when you come back early, production's happy with you instead right. of if you yep. come back on time, they're sitting there like, you just barely made it, you know? Mm-hmm. And that worked Under out because pro- we told them two hours and we were, we were in then 30, 40 minutes later, it worked. We were in line and then we got to wait for another hour. So it was perfect. No. So, <laughs> that's when we got the locked off fight going right before that. It's we mm-hmm. literally put it in the test box and there's a, this is like cross your fingers and hope it drives good. I drove it forward for like three seconds. I turned. It was the short. It, it wasn't even like it wasn't even like five seconds in the box. I was like, okay, it's good. Let's go. I think literally what Jeff did was he drove from one amazing. side of the test box to the other and then back. And he's like, it's good. Yeah. Let's go. Uh, Donald Hudson was actually sitting there watching our test. Um, mm. And we went into that fight. Um, like we didn't even know how good it was going to drive and it drove so much better than our expectations. <laughs> and I think wow. Donald Hudson was sitting there like, this is a, a whole different robot from what I've been seeing f- for the rest of this, from the rest of the season, you know? Yeah. I, I love that he and Chuck had both had the same look on their face of just like, impressed but horrified <laughs> and completely yeah. shocked yeah. and i think what that happened? that was really the thing yeah like nobody there's oh. so many things about jackpot that nobody saw coming uh uh-huh. but that was like really affirming and then so then in donald's interview to be you know on the vex thing talking about jeff is being like that he's so glad that he's had the influence in the community to enable builders like jeff because that was part of the storyline is you know uh-huh. jeff's grown up watching you know him fight this whole time and for him to appreciate how much the whole thing meant to us was really like it was just really and also yeah realizing that donald hudson had been watching our live streams like oh my god i would have worn makeup (laughs) 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 what the heck so like that was just a totally i had no idea that people had noticed us at that level so that was really interesting (laughs) wow so, so I guess then it sounds to me like you design your robots, not necessarily in a vacuum, but you don't think about other robots when you're going out or, or do you like, did you have a poster of tombstone hanging up in the garage and you like every so often throw a dart at it or like, you know, like, I don't think so, but, um, you know, it was, was, did you have a bot in mind that you built jackpot for, or was it just like, no, we want, we're, we made an ass, a, a butt kicker. And so we're going to go out and we're going to go kick some butt. I, th- I think jackpot is an anti four wheel drive vert four wheel drive vert. Yeah. An anti four wheel drive vert. Yeah. Well, something that I observed from the live stream. So this isn't me speaking from like direct experience, but when I was watching you guys, you know, interact with Dustin or, you know, the guys from huge or malice or whatever, when you were talking out shapes of things and like how the uprights were going to go, 
it was very much like, okay, if you're sustaining force from this direction, this is where it's going to go. And this is how the physics is going to affect it. So you were kind of keeping like the execution in mind, maybe not specifically bots, but I can't, I'm not sure, but that was my read on it was that everything going into it was very, uh, informed in at least a vague sense yeah. of what what it was going to have to endure um because of what we know can be dished out yeah i think what we were really thinking was what would happen if we go up against a horizontal and what would happen if we go up against a vert um mm-hmm. we weren't really thinking about hammers or hammer saws and uh i don't think we thought much about undercutters um, yeah, I, I was we just thinking about that. Armor. We had a lot of top armor for hammers. <laughs> we, mm-hmm. That was easy. We were just like, yeah. oh, we can get yeah. two inches thick of top armor. But that was all. Yeah. <laughs> but if you would have had to fight, like, uh, uh, Valkyrie is an undercutter, isn't isn't it? Yeah. If you would have had to fight something like that, or uh, what's uh, Jen Herkenroder's. Uh, Hi, Jinx. Uh, what is that one? Hi, Jinx. Hi, Jinx. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, or if you would have had to fight something like hijinks, would you have uh, changed the armor slightly, or or just just roll with it? I, oh yeah, so rotator was literally the worst horizontal we can go against because yeah. our our wedge was hinged, um, and we didn't have any way to keep the wedge from going into our weapon. And with rotator's forks, he could get under mm-hmm. us and just feed it into our weapon. That's why we ended up putting the wedge on the back. Um, mm-hmm. I think if we were going against rotator, tombstone, uh, hijinks, we would have put the wedge on the front. And uh, yeah. yeah. I, I think yeah. if we were then, to do it again, yeah. I would a um, I would have uh, pulled the ESCs out and we would have uh, welded it to the nose. Yeah. I think that would have been the, the, if we had to do it again. But then again, it's still a compromise because we didn't have, no matter what we did, we were not able to keep the self riding mechanism. Because when we originally mm-hmm. designed the robot, it didn't have one of those. That whole arm assembly was created at BattleBots. So it was. Oh, wow. Bad. Yeah. That was one of my favorite parts, too. Both the wedge you designed, like, the day you left for BattleBots, I want to say, and, like, had it delivered and you made it, like, the first day when you guys drove there. Wasn't that the mm. case? And then the winch was when you're like, you know what? 30 bucks at Harbor Freight. Let's try a winch. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, that we, we snapped off the arm so many times trying to get that oh, thing wow. going. Um, yeah. And at the end, the solution was just oh. more weld. Like there is just this massive hunk of weld on the, the self rider uh, spool um, <laughs> that held that arm on. And uh, yeah. every so, uh, every so often we'd have to bend that arm back into place because it was just aluminum. So yeah, mm-hmm. that, w- that was a fun one for sure. Yeah. So the, the spool on that was cast aluminum. You, if anyone knows, knows well that you can't weld to cast anything, really. So Mm-mm. eventually it was no longer cast. It was just all weld. <laughs> it was sculptural. It was a sculptural piece. Yeah. <laughs> it really did wind up. I That, that winch for me really sums up a lot of the experience. Because, like, I put the decorations on it while you guys were agonizing for the Ghost Raptor fight, trying to get the drive because Ghost Raptor was supposed to fight the day before we actually did. And I think that's why yeah. Ghost Raptor wound up fighting twice that day. But we, mm. like, I was watching in this uh, fourth person, there's not very much you can do in that situation, you know, and the guys are getting frustrated because they're loading the bot in and out of the box and dealing with batteries yeah. and all the stress of what's going on with the programming. And so I was mm. standing there getting like me being a time management, like, cause I'm, very like i'm always falling behind on time so i get really stressed out about it so i was feeling really like pressured and just magnifying all the stress and i was like you know what i can do anything else (laughs) so i just started drawing the (laughs) icons and when the guys i think the guys thought i was a lot more mad than i was because i was just like okay i have to not be here because i'm gonna make this a not good time for people Mm. so i went and did the things and when they finally like worked stuff out or they were kicking us out of the building i was like look guys i made the winch holographic and it has little summons on it isn't this fun and i started to look (laughs) on you guys' faces being like 
okay. <laughs> that's not the direction we expected this to go. I don't know if that's actually what your experience was, but that was the read I had on the situation at the time. So I was like, okay, this can be a real bad time or I can I go. Think it, I think our, our feelings right then were like, how many hours of sleep can I get? Uh, before we have to come back in the morning. Um, uh, yeah. yeah, we would we get were, kicked out. We get yeah. until late. Yeah, like we would what, come yeah. in as early as they would allow us, and then they would kick us out. And that was... What was the schedule like? Like, like 6 a.m. Yeah, midnight, like, kind of? Yeah, 6 a.m. Or 8 a.m.? Maybe 8 wow. a.m.? And how many days did, what, did, does the shooting take place over? Like I've never, I've never seen okay. BattleBots live. So like, was it a situation where you know you have to be there every single day? There's curtain call at eight, or like you know how does that work? So, so yeah, it was two weeks. the The thing was is jackpot specific. I, I said this before. Jackpot had we had to do a lot of work to get it to run like it did. Um, yeah. So you're cramming a year of development into four six yeah. weeks and um, two of those weeks were during filming yeah yeah so there's like i know copperhead you know they would come out of a fight and they were perfectly fine and they would just sit around um you know but you know we we had to develop while we were there and man we, we spent all our time working on that robot and then um one day i, I had to Reweld one of the frames after the sub zero fight. Um, yeah. after the weapon broke, um, mm -hmm. we re welded the whole robot and, um, I ended up getting some poisoning from, uh, welding the welding the robot. Oh yeah. Was so, it that early? Just, I didn't realize it was that early in the process. That's brutal. Yeah. I thought it was, I thought it was much later, but I also don't remember very much from that time because it was so, yeah. <laughs> there was so much going on. Yeah. So um, was it? Oh, go ahead. No, go ahead. I wasn't going to say anything well, important. Oh, okay. I was just going to ask. Was it? So what is it, is it? What is it exactly that led to there being such a small amount of time? Was it just basically like Bunny calling up and be like, "It's go time," you know, like you know, and you had to go immediately, you know, like. Yeah, or 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 was it was it just so you know, what, what was it that led to that yeah go ahead it was the 2020 season specifically uh because yeah. of covid a lot of teams couldn't right. make it and BattleBots was just desperate for new teams yeah so okay. most of the time it's actually really hard to get into BattleBots. uh Malice Especially had with jump, a four -wheel drive. <laughs> yeah malice had to jump through a ton of hoops to get in um, because really? they got in the normal way. Yeah. Um, and initially, we just kind of, yeah, we just put in our application and they were like, all right, go ahead. You're good. So, uh, like we didn't have to change Damn. anything around. So, um, but on the flip side is we only had, you know, we only got to know BattleBots was happening four weeks before it happened. So mm -hmm. we had to build really fast. Yeah. And I mean, I think Jeff, like he did the, the CAD within like, you know, it was a 24 hour labor experience, but it was in two days. Like the, 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 mm. the man hours that were put into it are kind of misleading because like Jeff and Chris were both like, that was their full-time job for that month and doing, yeah. you know, the stuff that I was helping out with, like I was trying mostly to stay out of the way because <laughs> there wasn't enough time to catch me up on the learning curve that I had yeah. so much. I was there for moral support and, you know, painting and stuff and doing the branding, but it was really mm -hmm. like, the 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 hours that went into it uh are much more than you would think like oh four people for four weeks yeah it's it, not a normal representation of <laughs> yeah. it, it was rough i i know like so i i was working uh full time and you know so I, I was working 10 hour days and i would get home and then work until like i literally had to go to bed to go back to work um mm -hmm. It was a rough four weeks. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm yeah. sure it was. No, I'm. Yeah. Yeah. Go you, ahead. Uh, you leave for work at what? You were leaving at work at like three, four a.m. Uh, at three a.m. Yeah, and I was getting over to his house because he gave me the clicker. So me and Christian mm -hmm. get over there at like five in the morning. 
and just keep going mm. every day. Yeah. And then, well, I'm and you had home. Chris for the last, like Chris got there for two weeks, I think, right? Before yeah, because that first two weeks was literally just me there every day. Yeah. yeah. Work, and then I got home at like well, and, four and you had and done work till eight. And then, I want to say the first week was a little bit more like you did the design, you nailed down the design. We posted that we were going to do it we got sponsorships so we could order the metal like the thursday like the design started saturday <laughs> the metal was ordered yeah. thursday and the motors arrived on like that friday because i want to say you guys bought the motors and stuff on tuesday or something yeah so yeah. that first weekend was kind of chill like we we're like oh let's hang out and epoxy some motors and let's do a test and this is gonna be so fun and then <laughs> like once the metal hit it was like okay this is our lives now <laughs> especially for you guys like <laughs> jeff and chris did so much heavy lifting and robert just like did not did not breathe did not eat just did, was working continuously whether yeah. it was on the robot or what and it was just really remarkable what you guys came up with it's just crazy absolutely yeah <laughs> Oh, so before the show gets away from us here, we're actually coming to the to the bottom of the hour. We're just, this is this is normally quitting time, uh, and actually normally we would have gotten rid of the YouTube people about an hour ago. But you know this is this is a special occasion, so you can have the post game as a snack. YouTube people, <laughs> but uh, all the uh, all the all the Twitch uh, people, uh, you know, uh, keep watching, and YouTube people also keep watching, and you get the rest of this, you know. No problem. Normally, though, we only do the uh, first hour for the Twitch, uh, for for the YouTube people, and uh, Twitch gets both. So, extra bonus today as a treat. But um, oh, I wanted to ask you though before we go, because what like your your big thing, is, uh, you know, BattleBots was just a thing that happened, but LVCR. We haven't even said a dang <laughs> word about it. What are we doing? Well, here? We almost have to do a separate episode just on VCR because this. This whole thing like, so far has been jackpot. There's like a whole other world. I mean, yeah. Just, I haven't I, booked anything for next week. I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, the, it, the small robots, uh, the community is really cool. And like, mm -hmm. it's, it's a lot of fun. We've done events at Millennium Fandom and uh, mm -hmm. 702 oh, really? Racing. Yeah, um, yeah, Millennial Fandom was an absolute blast. I mean, nothing's funner than, a, you know, fighting robots in front of a drunk crowd of It was very people. real steel. It was very real yeah. steel. Yeah. <laughs> oh, really? Not a normal bot, not a normal bot uh, situation with people cheering and getting so excited. Normally, there's some spectators, but that was just like. Over the top. Yeah, it yeah, was. That was so fun. And it was a very small event. There were yeah. only mm -hmm. how many builders were there? Like five. Yeah. Um, yeah. It, uh, oh, wow. That was a fun event. And then we did an event of 32 robots in, well, 64, because we had two classes um, at, uh, we did a, the one, well, no, we did all three. We had fairy weights too. We had the 150 gram. We had the yeah, one. We didn't have very many fairies show up though. Yeah. So we were, we run, four classes uh, mm -hmm. uh we run 150 grams we run mm -hmm. one pound and we run one pound plastics which is um you know all the frame and the weapon has to be made out of 3d printed plastic and then we run mm -hmm. three pounds um and uh you know it, those are a blast and if you ever get a chance to see those uh, events in person it's it's worth going to um mm -hmm. i'm grabbing some way different robots robots right now so gotcha I'll have those in a second. oh cool yeah so yeah part, i mean how this whole thing started right was jeff just wanted more people to fight with so started befriending <laughs> people and hopefully yeah, yeah. Yeah. I didn't want to keep flying across the country to go fight. Because I think you went to how many, like, you went to 12 events or 14 events in 12 months yeah, it was before awesome. everything shut Every down. weeks I was at an event. It was nuts. Everybody knew Jeff. Yeah. Which is why when they saw I was finally doing something, they're like, oh, this guy. <laughs> because I think I went to, in one year, I was in Seattle, Pennsylvania, Mm. Uh, Sacramento, uh, San Francisco, S Southern California, uh, Utah, Texas. 
Te- Texas, Colorado, Pennsylvania. I think I already mentioned that. And yeah, I think that Arizona. was the East Coast of the Pennsylvania at the time. Oh, uh, Spin Wizard asks, are there plans for another Desert Dust Up type of tournament? We're yeah. really looking forward to doing events again once it's safe. Yeah. 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 That's, been our, that's been our main holdback. Mm-hmm. Not to get all the political, but hopefully, like tomorrow, apparently everything's opening back up a little bit. So that's a good sign for us, maybe doing events in the future. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And another yeah. thing we we're looking forward to is planning more like build day type things, which we can live stream and stuff like that. Um, mm-hmm. You know, we have our fa- we're pretty active on the Facebook groups. We need to uh, build up the builder page more for VCR specifically. But yeah, yeah, doing more more builds and getting people to figure out how to make their robot dreams come true and get more one and three pound bots fighting. That's the goal. Yeah, I got yeah. a few different uh, size robots with me. So awesome. Hit. I have a soda, I have a soda can just so you can kind of get an idea of the size of these. So this one's, you know, just well, there's no banana. So I have no idea how big it is, but I guess we'll try it with the soda can. I don't know. This is uh, this be like a fairy, fairy weight, 150 gram. It's okay. A, uh, the carcass right now doesn't have any, you know, guts in it. I just happen to have it on my table, but as mm-hmm. you can see it, you know, it'd fit in your pocket. Like yeah. These ones pocket sized F, yeah. Yeah. Then we're talking more like, you know, one pounders. This would be more of a one pounder right here. Oh. This uh-huh. is a uh, big waffle. Oh, uh, okay. Oh, yeah. no. <laughs> uh, oh, you, I, I see you. I see you. Where is it at? I, I can't the scourge find of the internet. Have, uh, I have a, a tombstone clone that's also one pound called Purple Nurple. Yeah. So all my one pounders <laughs> are like themed to like you know childhood trauma or childhood. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 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 childhood like, I think the next one I want to do is like Swirly or something along those lines. You know, like all yeah, the, yeah, yeah. Like, see in like middle school. <laughs> Ones like these, which are a, a yeah. one pound plastic. As you can see, it's all three with printed ABS PLA. T- well, wow! What, what is the? Is that a blade on it or? It, it's it, it's a pla- it's like super thin. It's not even like. Wow. Cowbite that I, yeah there there you go cowbite. There you go. That's not a bad one. Yeah. Um, so it, it's it's it wow. like a drum blade. So it just kind of friction cuts through other plastic robots. Okay, that's what I was wondering. I was like, well, that, that how does that do anything? Okay, got it. The, yeah, so it kind of works like I, I saw an old video of like someone using like a paper disc to cut through like plastic. And I was like, well, I can't run yeah. the paper, so I can just run the, you know, run it as a plastic. It's like super thin. So it's like not even 0.1 milliliters thin. It's like if you hold up to light, you can see through it. Is that how thin it is? Yeah. Wow. Then you have a uh, three pounder switch. That thing is a monster. I think I saw I, that one. You, you ran that one at Nor, what, Nor, what? Norwalk. 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 Yeah. Yeah. It didn't have a good showing at, there we go. It didn't have really good yeah, showing at Norwalk because it was having a lot of issues because this is the first version. It's the new version. Mm. Like, mm-hmm. here's a chassis of an old version. Yeah. It's always being okay. updated. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. you know, actually, that reminds me. Somebody, somebody asked about that just real, real quick here. When you build different versions, like you take, you take out a jackpot, for instance, and you, uh, and, and it gets broken, and so you make changes, like you were talking about over the course of the two weeks when you were at BattleBots. Do you see that as one robot? Do you see it as as jackpot version one, two, three, etc., or do you, or do you see it as like? You know the the ship of Theseus. Is it? Is it yeah, I, just, you know. I was about to quote that. I guess because I I have seen WandaVision. So <laughs> absolutely, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Is it is it still that if you take all the parts off of a jackpot and swap them out, is it still jackpot? You know. Yeah, that's basically it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I find it funny, just like from an outside perspective. You know, we we did the show. The thing didn't exist 
for so long and then it exists for a month and we did the show and then yeah a few months a couple months later it starts being aired and the mm-hmm. the forks and the bunny ears were such a small part of like they only existed on jackpot for such a narrow frame of time but when we were getting mm-hmm. fan art initially oh. it was so funny to see it with the wedges and the bunny ears and we we're like that's not jackpot <laughs> i mean it was oh, wow. we loved it but it was so funny to see that and be like oh yeah i guess yeah. that was jackpot you know that 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 is how it existed in people's imaginations initially until you know after that we never considered the forks at all yeah. and the bunny ears once we had the winch didn't An exist example of it too is like this right here used to be what Wumbo looked like before and this is what mm-hmm. it looks like oh, now. Wow. it's still the same robot but yeah it's, it's very different we yeah. are differentiating between like season five jackpot and future jackpot you know like we do have Mm -hmm. a distinction between the two where we'll refer to oh yeah what we did on jackpot one is totally something we would do for jackpot 2.0 you know that kind of thing Mm -hmm. but example mm -hmm. would be um witch doctor look at season one witch doctor versus season three oh yeah it's way different season one witch doctor looked a lot more like (laughs) with like a purple pink or purple uh green paint scheme but now it's you know mm-hmm. all themed out. It's got skeleton on its back, and yeah, you know, it's still the same robot. It's just developed yeah. more. Or you have. I don't three think. Go ahead, Kay. Oh, I don't think we intended to really like Jackpot this much. Like, because in the time frame that we had, I think you guys like designed the bot you knew could be functional and efficient. So that's why mm-hmm. it wound up being the four wheel driver. But we didn't really think about we're like oh if we you know we would come with this robot this time but in the next season we would probably bring a different bot and Mm -hmm. after the experience we had with jackpot we're like oh no this this is this this is a thing (laughs) you know this is a bot it it has a personality and we we you know jackpot we couldn't just bring another design like we couldn't bring you know uh, a hammer just a straight up hammer and call jackpot no you know jackpot's those big diamond things and <laughs> oh you know what if, if go ahead that's in the other extreme example you have chunk chunk was originally yeah. started like a it was a four-wheel drive you know lifter like season one bike force was or overhaul is now mm-hmm. then you know season two it was the full uh you know the whole hoop hammer then now of season five it's that whole turret walker but it's well, still season- yeah Season one, Chomp was a crusher. Was it a crusher? Oh, was yeah. it? Yeah. I, I thought it was like a grabber lifter. Well, I mean, a lot of crushers turn into grabber lifters. That's true. Like grabbers. Mm-hmm. Um, oh. It's, it's oh, hard it, to get the force to actually puncture a robot. Yeah, I would think so. Yeah, no, I've never really seen the 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 stabby stabby bots to to be that uh, that productive very often. Oh, but I was gonna say, if you do decide to do it like a hammer bot or something like that, one arm banded. <laughs> yeah, it writes uh, itself. It, yeah, it we, writes we've itself. been tossing around ideas of bringing a second robot. Uh, one yeah. of them was. Uh, we were thinking a uh, multi-bot and calling it double down and we, we're tossing around ideas, but, uh, mm-hmm. I think we're going to stick with just jackpot this year. Um, and like the new jackpot is, is going to be so much better than the old jackpot. I'm super excited for Thanks. next season. Ugh. I mean, if, if you end up on it, no one knows. No one has any idea what's going to happen. There's nothing being announced here. We don't know. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. um, I did want to. Uh, there was something. Oh, oh, walking bots. Right. Yes. Have you ever seen a walking bot? Be. Are wheels more optimal than legs? That's that's the nice way to ask that. So Shay needs to go find her robot. Well, you know we're, we're running out of time. I don't want to. Okay. I don't want to drag. You know on what? Too hey, much. so sh- oh, shit. Uh, we're all re- we're over time now. Go. go, go uh, we must see the robot. Uh, 
it well it uses uh, bristles, we, we don't, like it's yeah, a bristle but... bot that's it that well it's 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 in a couple pieces right now so it takes some explaining but it's it uses i use cat okay. brushes instead of wheels because it's a bristle bot but the way the way battle bots wants to see walking is they want mm -hmm. chomps basically they don't yeah. they're not yeah. open to it's not an unconventional drive thing you know they don't want gyro walkers because those are again an arena hazard more than you know they're they're a hazard to the arena so mm -hmm. they want something that's more directly controlled they want articulated walking motion they don't just want something with legs they want something that consumes an extra 250 pounds to achieve that locomotion so mm -hmm the way i approach unconventional driving is unconventional but it <laughs> is related more to how you can use the existing energy in the bot that normally you have to fight when you're driving with wheels and how you can turn that into the motion and harness it that way yeah. and that's that's my approach to it which they really want a completely separate walking mechanism for that, which makes total sense. But they also want a very complex walking mechanism, which is really hard for people to execute successfully. If they wanted just walking, we could give them just walking, <laughs> you know, we mm -hmm. could give them like, yeah. or, you know, a shuffling or something, but they want, I think yeah. chomp like walking. And that's really restrictive yeah the ideas that we would have for that are gonna take way more time and development and be more expensive yeah so. currently one of the most dominant robots and beetle weights is classified as a walker called droopy yeah um hmm. uh you know it functions more like rex wanted to yeah um so I don't know about articulated legs. I think it could possibly be a good robot, but there hasn't been a good articulated robot, uh, articulated leg combat robot built yet. Yeah. That I know of. I think Chomp, I think Chomp came the closest because that was a good yeah. way to handle it because like, you know, I'm going to get into position. I'm going to be here. And then when you drive up, I'm going to stab you. Yeah, I know. Uh, well, that's that was fascinating to me because, like, the way it hunkered down to move. When mm -hmm. I'm thinking from a bristlebot perspective, I'm like, oh, if you have legs that are, you know, all walk in one direction, if you freeze mm -hmm. when your weapon is activated, that motion could turn you into a bristlebot, and then you could move. And the direction that the weapon is spinning is how you can kind of torque steer. That would be a really like concise or in my mind a very efficient way to use that based on watching like oh when chomp wants to use its weapon chomp hunkers down you can do that mm -hmm. you know that would be cool that would be a cool way to do it but it would really the only way to do that would be to be a shuffle bot so you wouldn't get the weight bonus and there's not really a lighter way to do legs that would hold up than wheels well i know there's a robot. There was actually a robot um, called Scuttle, and it was a full body spinner. And I think it did like it won a few fights. It was. It wasn't really. It was a potential robot, like potential to have be a really good robot. It's just the problem is is leg joints and all that tend to be really really fragile compared to the rest of the robot and they're super slow so it's always you know you're getting out maneuvered yeah that's yeah. why uh, yeah. uh chomp watching, had that turret and uh watching chomp get pushed around really made me appreciate <laughs> the, the downfalls <laughs> to wheels because they just didn't have the traction you know the yeah. gamma nine pushed them around and could lift them even like since the mechanisms now are so strong being 500 pounds isn't a guarantee that you can just squish somebody so yeah. the advantage is really kind of mitigated by how much it, it has to go into but a walker would be really interesting but also clean sweep was uh wasn't that a heavyweight? Was that 200 pounds or 250? Where they, it was a bristle bot with two, uh, uh, two vertical spinners. The middleweight. 
middleweight. And so mm -hmm. the the bristle, because you know the direction that the bristles are angled is sort of the you know direction it'll go. So if the left goes stronger, it functioned more like wheels to control mm -hmm. the bristle bot thing. And so that you know that's something you could do for under two hundred fifty pounds. But for getting a an unconventional walking thing would be uh, the direction that they're pushing walkers it's harder to do it the Vegas way <laughs> I yeah, think yeah. right now. Yeah. Oh, so I, I cut Jeff off earlier before we, before we uh, was able to get through all the, all the different sizes. So I'm sorry about that. I wanted to come back to that. Oh, no, no, you're, I think I covered all of all the three sizes. The only thing I did cover is I'm a 12 pounder right here, but we don't fight. These yeah. Have Which one is take that? A, this, take a considerable arena. But this should be like, right, but, this should be ready for uh, Norwalk. It just doesn't look like it, but it's it's just a brand. Yeah. It, it, Very they cool. Could, they could it super quick. Like literally, all I had to do is that. All right. Let me say, Jeff is an ungodly fast builder. That's a thing mm -hmm. too. So when he says pretty quick, that might be like. A couple weeks for a normal person you know how they joke oh, about wow. like oh the lives you're seeing of people online like it's curated you know people don't live every day like the way they post on instagram it's like mm -hmm. jeff sees that and actually lives that at that pace like <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's, funny. that's that's my uh that's my view on jeff's building is you're just prolific yeah i oh, super cool i build a lot of robots oh, that don't actually make it to competition. Like I build mm -hmm. them just to test out some ideas. And then it, a lot of times I'm just like, you know, I'm not too psyched on how this robot's going together. Let me try something else. Mm -hmm. And, uh, over, over this whole, uh, pandemic, I, uh, mm -hmm. I've built quite a few robots that just never see the light of day because, you know, like one of them had the mechanum wheels. The problem with mechanum is they just can't stay together very well. So like mm. it would, it was driving awesome. It was doing the strafing and then it would just start throwing the rollers. And I was like, all right, this is not going to work. So try something else. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, the mechanum, like, those are the ones that you can go forward, backward and side to side. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I think okay. you, if you could get an Omni drive robot to work in, like i think an omni drive would be really useful it's just hard to get wheels strong enough to be in combat yeah shattered seemed to do fairly well at it yeah yeah well, the bigger you go the the more practical those wheels become uh but for a lower weight class that, that's a lot more difficult yeah yeah is that what you're saying yeah yeah okay well, I think it's about time to uh, to to put this one back on the charging station, if you will. Uh, so, so do you guys have any final thoughts? Anything you want to make sure that you 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 plug or or you know anything you want to cover or whatever before we uh, before we plug in the wall ward? Uh, we've got a Facebook uh, VCR group that you can join yeah. or um, a page you can follow to see when we're going live or doing whatever. We've been kind of dormant lately, but hopefully as things are picking up, we'll be able to do more like uh, build day type things, streams and stuff. Yeah. Really excited to meet up you guys and uh, start uh, hanging out at the sin shop soon, I hope. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, no, definitely. I'm going to plug something that's not tied to us, but both me and Shay will be at uh, Norwalk Havoc on uh, May 15th. So if you want to mm -hmm. do a bunch of robots about this size fighting each other for about 11 hours, uh, you should tune in. Yeah. There, uh, it's like 14 hours of BattleBots uncut, just with small bots. Yeah. <laughs> and you'll see, you'll see, see us from Jackpot. You'll see a bunch of people there from other big teams. Uh, you'll see... Uh, Ray Billings was at the last one. So you'll see all the big guys mm -hmm. the show, but on a smaller scale, then be, seeing that will give you motivation to uh, build one yourself and maybe come to one of our events that we have uh, maybe later in the year. Who knows? Absolutely. I just dropped some, uh, some links in the chat uh, for uh, their Facebook page, as well as 
uh, the YouTube channel for the Norwalk Havoc Robot Robot League. So if you guys want to check that out, uh, links over there. And if you're watching this on YouTube tomorrow night, uh, links down below in the doobly doo. So awesome. Once we get the shop back open, it is going to be fantastic to have you guys come down. I'm I am sure that's not going to be any problem whatsoever. Thanks so much for having us well, on. This is so fun. Yeah absolutely absolutely we'll definitely have you back again sometime for sure and 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 this time and next time we'll actually talk about lvcr for more than like two minutes <laughs> oh hopefully next time we'll be uh, on here to promote an event <laughs> yeah very cool okay yeah yeah i'm looking forward to that too man for sure what you, what you got robert yeah I mean, we uh me and jeff and shay could probably run some robots in the arena at my house and we could do some videos of that um, there you go yeah we could stream something like that or hopefully do something at the makerspace too yeah we have yeah, the technology awesome. yeah absolutely all right well yeah uh, you guys just stick around uh, afterwards and we'll we'll definitely uh, talk a little bit about that all right so but for everybody else that sounds like all sorts of fun. It will be Titans, as a matter of fact, but not our new floors. Yeah, absolutely not. We just, we just poured new floors. Yeah, actually, speaking of which, yeah, yeah, you definitely don't want that on the floors. So speaking of which, I want to say uh, to everybody uh, th uh, one more time that this is on, all on behalf of the Sin Shop. Uh, we're a maker hacker space located in Las Vegas, Nevada. Uh, that gives you all of the uh, tools and equipment that you can use to make whatever your little heart desires. So uh, if you'd like to come check out the shop, we are unfortunately mostly closed right now. Uh, but if you check out our Discord, sinshop.org forward slash Discord, you will see there in the shop build out channel uh, information on when the shop will be uh, open again and uh, also a little bit uh, occasional updates on progress and stuff like that. Uh, but if you just like well, some general information about the shop, you can head over to sinshop.org for, uh, for that. And for more information on uh, any uh, upcoming events, including uh, online ones just like this one, you can head over to beatup.com forward slash sinshop. Robert, Jeff, Shay, thank you so much. We had a, a wonderful time tonight. Chat loved you. The Discord loved you guys. It was fantastic. <laughs> thank you so much for coming by. We really do appreciate it. Thanks for having us. This is so fun. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Just let, let us know when you want to do this again. <laughs> we, um, we, we're more than willing to talk again. Uh, excellent. All right. Well, we'll, we'll stick, stick around, you guys. All right, everybody. Well, hey, thank you so much for uh, for uh, stopping by the channel again. On Monday night, we got our project stream. Uh, so everybody in the chat, you know, feel free to uh, you know like, follow, subscribe, click the buttons. You know what to do. Uh, and uh, yeah, and hopefully we'll see you on uh, on Monday night show and next Friday. Who knows? We you know we we'll we'll talk about that later on. All right. <laughs> Have a good night, everybody, and take it easy. Thank you.